Cool. Hello everyone. I uh, just got through registration. I've got my uh, got my little little lanyard. It's very sunny. I've sun creamed up. Uh, I'd opted for the shirt rather than the t-shirt. Anyway, you didn't need to know that. Um, so I'm here at uh, well, probably the annual like big rail outside event, possibly also inside event for um, for the industry. Uh, it was cancelled last year because of the Rona, and uh, well, I thought you know what. For the first ever on location rail matter, that's exciting. Um, I'll do rail live, and we're at rail live, and uh, so I'm not going to walk from one end of the site to the other. Uh, this is going to test the dead cats. It's a bit windy. Um, there's all sorts here. I'll maybe kind of draw draw your attention to a few things, but I'm going to stop talking. What I'm going to do is just walk and aimlessly meander through here, filming my face, and then speed up the footage. Uh, also, make sure my hand doesn't get in front of the lens. Point being, there's lots to see. We're going to pick out. I'm going to pick out as many interesting things as I can and squeeze them into one hour. You think? Do you think one hour is hard to fill? I've got a sneaking suspicion it's not going to be a problem. There's a huge amount of interesting stuff everywhere. Uh, unending supplies of interesting tidbits. There are helicopters. There are trains. There are locomotives. There are things that make sparks happen. There's this stuff. There's, there's all sorts, and hopefully I'm going to show you it all. Um. There we go. That was eight minutes of walking from one end of the site to the other, and I didn't even cover every every square of uh, of things there are to do and see. I've, I've, I can see some very important people over at the Officer Rail and Road tent over there. I've ended here at the. Uh, this is where all the the big policy people do their talks. Uh, limited to 55, as you can see down here. A sign saying limited to 55. Everything's COVID safe uh, as best as it can be. There's me waffling. All that remains for me to say really is. Um, Welcome to tonight's Rail Matter. <laughs> the Intercity 225 fades away, um, welcome right look behind me, I've come up to this, to the top of this fantastic um, prototype uh, bridge, it's actually based on yacht technology, I'm going to put some b-roll up now, um, based on yacht, kind of developed partly using yacht technology, one of the, I was chatting to one of the engineers who's actually a marine engineer, uh, kind of marine architect by trade, anyway there's the NMT behind me, or one of them, there's now two aren't there, um, yeah, this is this is it. This is Rail Live. Welcome. Um, I'm going to do my very best to go through uh, and um, <laughs> and pick out some things. It's a bit of a strange experience for me to be going around filming. I always feel super sheepish doing filming, which is why on location is a bit weird. But I'm going to get over myself and, and do some filming so that you can enjoy um, experiencing what happens here. There's also so so behind me over there. The entrance is over is over kind of over there uh, that way, um, and and then the other direction behind me on the bridge here is where the, that tent, the main tent, was and there's everything in between so there's all sorts of kit over here that we're going to go and kind of all, all this kit over here that we're going to go and look at um, there's the, the 
network rail sort of campus is over, over there. Uh, we'll see who's over there. Um, should be interesting. So uh, yeah, thanks thanks for the view. Um, this bridge. <laughs> More on this later. This is kind of it's interesting enough to have its own natter episode. But uh, lots of these things, I'm sure, will be interesting enough for their own episodes. Right, I'm now going to make my way back down the stairs. Um, I'm now going to show you a map showing where we went on, our, on my little high speed walkthrough and point out what things we might um, pick out. So there it is. There is the map of the site. Um, look at that. Very shiny. Rail Live 2021. Um, I, I feel like it's going to take an ages to fill up the hour, but it's not, is it at all? There's the entrance there's where I started, so walk around here, went down through here, went down here and looked at the train excitedly, and I went back up here, alluded to this, crossed over the tracks, uh, alluded to all of this, of which there's a lot, and then um, ended up up here, and just over here is the is the theatre, and that's where we ended, and we saw the X-Rail folk, and uh, there we go. So that's that's the site, it's huge, that's where the helicopters are going to land, uh, that's the giant Union flag. Um, Yes, so this is this is the site, and we're going to try. I'm going to try my very best to do everything. So I'm going to head over to uh, actually head back to the start and have a look at what's going on at the start. We'll try and work our way logically through the whole thing. Let's see where we get to, shall we? So I've come back down to the uh, back to the start again because I'm going to try and do a bit of a loop round and. and I think probably easiest if I try and capture as many stands as possible in one stint. So we're currently down in section, uh, actually this is the green, I don't even know what section this is, but it's the start next to the entrance. And actually there are already quite a lot of interesting things here. Um, for example, behind me is Yeltec. Yeltec make lots of uh, on-track sensors. So one of the main products they do, or one of, one of the projects that for me as a track engineer is most interesting is they do remote temperature monitoring. So rather than relying on a set of tracks in the depot um, that, that you check the temperature of to guess what the temperature is when you go out and need to um, put speeds on during high temperatures, um, you have remote sensors actually on the rails in question at the uh, high risk spots and it saves you, you know, you manage your resources better as a result. Um, but they do all sorts of remote sensing stuff and I need to um, continue some conversations I was having with them to develop some gauging based uh, remote sensing. You can't use lasers, you have to use optics, but anyway, that's, that's for another time. So that's Yeltec. Behind me is another one, it's another track one. So this is this is track work behind. You can see they've got a load of um, got a load of ferrules and and, and chair screws. There's a there's a nice um oh actually one of the more exciting things here, I'm gonna I'm gonna just show you here, is uh, this this is an LRP. I think I've talked about LRPs quite a bit. Um, one of the first times they were used in a very bizarre way was um, to actually aid in track gauging uh, on a bridge in, uh, in Wakefield. Um, and we used LRPs to, to stop the track sliding down the cant, which they hadn't been used like that before. Um, so they've got a load of them here. There they are. Yeah, yeah the chat, hello the track work chaps, hello, hello, they're behind us. Um, so there, there, there's some L LRPs, uh, lateral resistance plates. You see there's one in the middle of the sleeper and there's some, some in the background to give you an idea of scale, they're pretty large. Um, but yeah, they do all sorts of track stuff. So, so there's track work, um, and there's so much. I mean, there's so much. There's lots of things. That I'd, like, for example, this is what looks like a battery providing, heavy duty battery providing um, kit. We've got um, some surveying kit. That's an incredibly snazzy looking Kia behind me. Yeah. Surveying kit there. Um, we've got. Well, there's some on track. There's an on track trimble there. That's, uh, for anyone who's, uh, lots of people. I'm trying to avoid having too many people kind of in like shot, but it's it's going to happen. Uh, there's a whole. There's, look, there's a thing on ladders. There's ladders there. Um, there's a whole thing there of drills, drilling work. You've got to remember that a lot of the. It's all very well having bespoke railway stuff, but a lot of stuff on the railway is just fixing things and you need tools to fix things. Um, here's Anderton who do a load of um, concrete materials and here's some coping stones. These are interesting, they've got less They've got less smooth and, and more look, uh, some coping stones. This is the platform edge, this is what platform edge looks like and um, they've got they've got grit, they've got kind of got stone embedded in them a bit like uh, a bit like a vault actually. They've also got the integral, um, where are we? There you can see they've got the in integral uh, tactiles as well which is which is important. Um, lots of the stuff up this bit is to do with, well there's also there's a mixture of all sorts. So you've got, you know, there's troughing roots as well, there's some troughing roots. Uh, here's Premier Rail who do lots of uh, kind of uh, temporary fittings for for like doing maintenance work. There you are, see various bridges and temporary crossings and all sorts of exciting stuff. 
Uh, they, they, this, that's just a that's just a burger van. But um, so that's that. Now, what else have we got around? Oh, there's Hilti. Hilti, of course, who do lots of uh, huge numbers of different tools. There's all the various Hilti tools behind. There's the Hilti crew. Hello to the Hilti crew. Um, and here is uh, here is a manufacturer of uh, friction brake blocks for trains. <laughs> just huge range diversity of things and uh, here's Interflon who do um, there's, there's a fish plate there's a fish plate behind me you can see the fish plate um, and they've got lubricator different lubricator materials and there's spike fast so there's just huge diversity of different things oh also um, if you want to know what you, you'd see catch pits on the side of the track for drainage right you can see me getting hotter it's very very warm um, yeah catch pits uh, on, on track for drainage right well um, if you want to know what they look like underneath buried in the ground uh, there are some there I think actually the Aqua team did something which I thought was really interesting which is it's over here it's over this one I think in 2019 I found this really interesting and I wrote about it when I wrote my piece in rail about it which is seems like a genius idea simple simple as anything idea but genius which is put a hinge on it it's such a clever simple idea um i'm doing your job for you chaps <laughs> so, it's all right. that was in 2019 i had a good long chat with them about that it was just such a clever little idea um so yeah you can see there's a huge diversity of different things i think i've missed there's excalibur there with their screw bolts all manner of you, you name it they've got a screw bolt for it but these are all the different Different, different sort of shanked sleeper bolts and all sorts. There we are. So that was that sort of. I think I've kind of covered it. I've, I think I've broadly covered the star. I think if we walk this way, I'm going to walk over tracks. I'm going to be very careful. Avoid getting my palm in shot again. Uh, one of the slightly strange things about this site is that it's a it's a working test site, and for various reasons, there are just huge numbers of wheel sets. These, these wheel sets just sat and see the axle boxes and the wheel sets there's just loads of them everywhere um, very strange right behind us here this used to be this used to be Viva Rail right that's my chin this used to be Viva Rail now it's Chrysalis Rail they've got their shed I might be wrong on that like, Viva Rail might have been slightly, slightly that's why but anyway now it is Chrysalis Rail the point being transformation of existing stock into new stock it makes sense because loads of the stock gets stored here particularly the 319s and so there's Chrysalis Rail back there they've got a 319 um, that they're turning into Hydroflex. Also, there's a locomotive here called John Boy. Just thought it'd be relevant to see that. There, yeah, there's John Boy. So uh, there's, a, there's another bit here. Just had a, a nice chat with the Porterbrook crew, but uh, I'm not telling you that. Anyway, uh, more on that later. Uh, so yeah, I've got the Upshot here, who do, um, they do aerial photography, but with ground-based with a CCTV thing. And then we've got, so there's a lot of uh, sort of site safety stuff around here. So you can see some, some site safety signage down here, which is, uh, is quite good. We've got, uh, some some more cable troughing. Actually, you see more, much more of this stuff, which is the cable troughing with, um, with the with the the walk, the kind of the safe non-slip walking surface, which is good. Um, yeah, herd group, and, and then down here. Actually, if I walk this way a bit more, I see lots of friendly faces around already. I'm spotting the team from McCulloch Rail there. Uh, we've got Whitmore here, who produce. Um, I don't know what they do, but it looks like it's lubricants and, and friction modifiers by the look of it. Behind me here we have electrification equipment. We've got some, some pace which have their various sort of uh, electrification kit, bits of, bits of kit, it's all sorts of stuff. And then Robel here, who uh, they have a picture of a rail cross section as their logo, so you know, it's pretty unbeatable, right? There, it's awesome, there's Robel. But they do all sorts of things related to rail cutting, uh, stress tensors, so stressing the rail, all sorts of equipment there. It's not often that um, you get to stand right next to a locomotive, but uh, it's even less often that you get to do it in, a, in an on-location episode of Rail Matter. So uh, while there's a, there's a Land Rover behind me, there's this tiny little Land Rover behind me. Here is, is the buffer, is the buffer of a, of a Class 66. There is the first thing, giant shed behind me. It's huge. <laughs> Before I plot further into all the other infrastructure fun, uh, let's uh, let's look at a very shiny GWR track. There we are. There's, GWR. Uh, this, I think, I think, is one of the tri modes. I saw a rail shoe. Uh, there is a pantograph horn up there, um, and it possibly has some diesel prime movers as well. I, might, might be, might be a tri mode. Um, so we're going this way. Anyway, I'm just walking along. You see there? See, there's a, there's a pantograph. So, uh, um, yes, I think that's what this is. Although. You get up close to them, it's not quite as... I did over here, I did over here, uh, I won't say what organisation they are, but it's also this colour, and 
those letters in that same order and they did say it's uh they feel a bit like they're playing second fiddle compared to the murder <laughs> to the murder travels triple seven but there we go uh such is the the manner of things but of course these are york built trains let's go down here this is interestingly though this they've built this platform up a bit higher because it's it's at 1100 because it's actually providing level boarding and level access height with the step there brell york built in york uh unlike me i just live there behind me they're doing it actually behind over there you can see there's an awards ceremony uh, going on first behind me over here uh, there we are, you can see a, see a collection of people. <laughs> it's a, a naming ceremony for a locomotive. But uh, behind me we've got, uh, interestingly, some timber sleeper suppliers, which is interesting because creosoted timbers have been outlawed now on Network Rail. But uh, I'm sure there's other problems they do. Um, what else have we got? We've got, uh, there's another local behind me. We've got various, there's a, I think I just filmed this in B-roll. I just filmed of, uh, of some uh, platform, uh, sort, of, sort of GRP uh, polymer platform kit, which is quite interesting. We've got the um, the, the Scott Parnell, uh, sort of where, over, over here, the sort of elevated troughing stuff that you might see uh, popping up around a lot of the place. Uh, oh, I always like the concrete canvas is always interesting. Oh, I've not seen it, um, not actually seen it. Well, I've seen it in used a few places, but I've never had a chance to, it, to, to propose it. Um, but this sort of stuff here, so you can see down here, it's a concrete canvas. Wet it and it becomes concrete. Very clever. Um, so let's let's continue. So there's, there's a there's a man on a on a marquee, and also some underwater look, look, some little tidbits here. Presumably you can control it. Look, there's a that swimming pool looks tempting. There's a little RV for going around in, in water, which is quite interesting. Uh, here's Zollner. Uh, Zollner do uh, sort of signaling system stuff. So this looks like uh, actually a mixture of sort of sight warning, temporary signaling equipment. Another another row of many things to look at and. Uh, so we've got so we're, 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 we've already looked at concrete canvas uh, we've already looked at the Scott Parnell troughing but there's another Scott Parnell innovation I want to talk about it's so over here it's Technocrete now I wrote about this in 2019 because I thought it was awesome uh, very very clever this is a post and for every one of these that you install you need about uh, 60 kilos of uh, lots of cement and then about 20 kilos of water uh, this thing, I think, if from the, off the top of my head, is between 1.8 a bag. Thank you. 80 kilos of and it is 80 kilos of, of mix and, and of 60 to yeah 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 so so you think that's a huge difference in the stuff you have to lug around for a massive and it's also made of vegetable oil so it's so it's you know it has pretty decent green credentials but fundamentally from much the thing i will say is transportation is a major part of carbon emissions moving the stuff around also the moving heavy kit is bad for people's backs spines etc so this is a massive innovation it's just huge it's one of those things you just don't even think about you know, it's post mix this is a huge innovation that makes a huge difference to a lot of people. So I spoke about this, I spoke to them, this was early days in 2019, and they've been, I think it was rolled out a lot for projects uh, since then. It's been it's been getting lots of interest, I'm glad to say. So yeah, another cool innovation, Technocrete, very, very cool. I've just uh, spotted someone. Noel, hello, you're on. You didn't expect this, did you? <laughs> no, thought, I really didn't thought expect thought you were escaping. <laughs> How about you? It's Noel Dolphin off of wow. Fury and Frey. This is... Uh, it's not bad, is it? Especially specific, I'll just show the badge. Yeah, that's uh, it. I didn't wear mine, that was a mistake. It's <laughs> it's, it's behind me in every rail natter yeah, it's yeah, sat on the shelf yeah, yeah. so you know it's fine although I need the giant thing to oh, put wait, behind I'll me you, I should have had I know should've, yeah, should've we, should've we should have coordinated should've carried it on the know, train right? and bus yeah if, uh, if for any of you who don't know who you, it's Noel uh, founder of the campaign to electrify Britain's railways which is convenient because he sells the kit he's like, oh wait a minute but nothing, it's, yeah, there's, there's no uh, there's, there's nothing, nothing wrong there no no no, no, no. <laughs> we, we both know it's, we'll, we'll get Noel on to talk about um, electrification when, when the rolling program actually gets announced anyway right yep. I'll let Noel go because there's always so much to do in real life and limited time to do it and people like me get in the way anyway Cheers, Noel Karen. well let's see you see you later uh, let's go over the other side and have a look what we've we got we've got goldsmiths they do uh oh, sorry goldschmidt uh they do uh welding they do different types of welding there's loads of kit behind me here and we've got abtus there's my friends at abtus there's keith collin everyone at abtus they do uh they're one of the two uh clearance gauges engaging kits you can see the, the, the kit the serving kit down there at the bottom uh true flame kind of rail cutting there's a there's a austin there's a, there's a moggy anyway <laughs> there's there's so much kit around uh, here's the porterbrook stand you can get in there if you've got the vip Axis, which is nice which maybe I'll do later and go and get a cup of tea um, let's go this way so this is a queue for lunch I think here's the pandle stand which I'm going to come and look at later but here you have uh, oh my, all the pandle clips just there they all are we're going to come and look at that later because obviously 
Look, I'm, uh, I'm at the Pandrel stand. There's Pandrel. Uh, they make clips. The Golden Pandrel clip, as you might have, if you're a real now watcher. Um, who'd have thought that Premier Way would be that interesting? Look at all the people in orange, tabards, collected outside. Remarkable. When it's a bit quieter, we'll go and have a proper look uh, later on, though. So I've come down to the... Uh, the most important stand of them all, of course, which is the, the Pandal stand, uh, where there are all manner of Pandal fastenings <laughs> to be seen. Um, so I thought I'd come down and, and show you some of them. Um, it's not a bad excuse to, to explain some P-Way stuff. Um, so first thing we've got down here, we have, we've got, I've got a panning shop. We've got some of the uh, the various Pandal systems that work for, for slabs. So we've got, what we've got down here, we've got uh, some of the sort of standard base plate systems. We've got Vanguard here, which is a resilient system good for producing vibration. Uh, we have, and we have some of the more simple systems. You see some of the some of the more straightforward systems here. Um, this is probably the most probably the most popular one, which I think is the FCB. I think look it up in the uh, Pandal book. Anyway, what's quite nice, you've got some nice rail sections there as well. Um, other thing here, we have we have some uh, some rollers for de-stressing. Uh, which is quite nice and then we've got all manner of the sort of more standard pandrel fastenings so you've got the the re you've got the uh some of the old ones that's a nice e-clip you've got the in the background there we've got an e plus what else all the all the fastenings um yeah, also quite the nice little, little uh, AWS magnet there which looks quite smart. These are, so behind me, these are the battery powered uh, clip removers which are quite clever. They're quite good, I like those. Um, and uh, becoming more popular at the moment. They sort of sell petrol driven. These ones are electric driven which is very good, no problem. Um, so yeah, there's the panel system. And over there, they're, they're doing a, at the moment they're doing a, a rail weld over there behind me. Let's go and have a look, shall we? So you see they're, they're doing it within a box to keep, keep things nice and safe. Um, see there's kind of a mini stress tent down there uh, and, and a nice cutting disc and you can see they've got so you can see the crucible is going to be fitted over the top there's the mold for the weld behind you can see the weld there sort of standard aluminum thermic weld anyway, there we go there's no sparks coming out maybe we'll see some sparks later when we when we walk past I'm going to dive my way through these folks, uh, seeing lots of friendly faces all over the place. Um, so we have, uh, what do we have? We've got oh, more rail stuff. There's Cubis. Oh, Cubis are over here as well. They do, um, they do a variety of sort of drainage, uh, sort of drainage devices and bits and pieces. Uh, we're going to continue this way. There's lots of people milling around. I'm not going to try and avoid getting in people's way. Uh, we've got, uh, oh, so here we have Sati, but right, now these are interesting. Not a supplier I use or realise I'm using commonly, but maybe they, they might be one of the, they're a concrete supplier. So you can see they've got some, they've got some uh, twin box sleepers, they've got a, a booted monoblock sleeper there. Uh, in fact, let's, let's go and have a look, let's go and have a look at some of these. So we've got, there we are. Let's go and stand here. We've got some three different uh, twin box sleepers. We don't use these very often in the UK. Uh, we also have a, an oily mast foundation there, very smart. Um, these are good. Uh, if anybody wants to know what the difference between Voslo and Pandrel clips are, uh, here is some uh, here's some Voslo clips, and here are some uh, traditional Pandrel, and then also the fast clips as well. There we are. All right, that's enough of me waffling. I'm going to continue hammering this way and see what else I can spot without tripping over. Uh, uh, aiming this way because I wouldn't mind catching a bit of Sir Peter Hendy having a chat. Uh, there's lots of heavy yellow plant, which is actually the more expensive and snazzy looking kit. Oh, there's a rail vac by the look of it. There's a rail vac with the, the new new Hoover nose. Uh, lots of other so odor suppression, dust management, dust suppression, devegetation equipment here. This QTS with all their huge amounts of very exciting yellow plant that does a wide range of exciting things that I couldn't even begin to describe. Uh, Pod track similar. So this actually, so rail I've actually started as a um, in a car park with a load of yellow plant showing, and then it's kind of expanded from there. Uh, so Rose Hill, you'll see Rose Hill around. They do road rail access points, and and they do some level crossing installations as well. Um, what else have we got going around? We've got uh, lots of drilling equipment. Speedy is here. Here's Speedy. I actually need to hire Speedy for some pallet crates to lift our shed up. Maybe maybe we're going to speak to them later about that. Um, anyway, there's Speedy. What else? We've got uh, torrent trackside. So they torrent here have a, a huge amount of railway plant and trackside support equipment. Funnily enough, the railway industry is a hugely complicated thing, and doing railway engineering is is requires lots of kit. Uh, here's some interesting structures, so they do OLE piles, king posts, pile cap adapters, that's them, there they are. 
they are. I'm not going to get everyone down, but I'm doing my best to sort of give you a feel for the complexity and the, the variety of equipment on show here. Some more GRP kit. There's a lot of GRP kit around, actually. Um, here is a huge forklift truck above my head. It's, it's a bit ominous. I could use that to lift my shed, couldn't I, I suppose? Bridgeway, they used to do free bike vacant bikes, but they also do lots of... Uh, Bridgeway do a lot of... Um, consultancy work for uh, various sort of installation they supply staff for some of their work uh, who else have we got we got safe aids doing uh, PPE uh, kits so that's uh, sort of lots of PPE here behind as well PPE is quite a big business of course uh, oh we've got Jura composites now th this is quite interesting so let's, let's have a plot through into into Jura composites shall we so um, firstly uh, for the for the architecture buffs there are composite options there are some nice platform uh, platform canopy valance there uh, in GRP they've obviously got the standard sort of strong grip grippy kit to, to walk around on you've got structural stairs you've got huge amounts of stuff I go in, I'm gonna go in the shade the Jura composite people here look at these the, for the architecture buffs there are the various named platform canopy balancing types look at this very snazzy uh, the, for the for the uh, for the the modernist simplists you've got you've got the Nora there's Nora uh, like that one very good anyway uh, Hello Jura Composites team, hello, hello. They're, they're all saying hello. <laughs> the good thing about Ray Live is lots of friendly faces. Thanks for your time, uh, cheerio! <laughs> Yeah, so there's all sorts of different structures. So you've got various bits. You've got this. They're showing that they've got almost an entire station can be built out of these bits of kit. Why do you, wire comps is a good idea? A variety of reasons. They last longer than than certain existing materials, and they can obviously be easier. To, they can be easier to assemble because you can make them bespoke shapes, which means they can clip together and all sorts of things. Like they're often lighter, so you can do things quicker. Carbon emissions aren't just about the material that the thing is built from. It's a bigger picture, and people uh, sometimes forget that. Um, I'm going to continue milling this way. I love Rail Live because it's just huge numbers of people going, Oh, hello. I haven't seen you in ages. That's what it's all about. And particularly this year, uh, it's just full of people who haven't seen each other for a very long time. Uh, here's Garrick. Uh, SPL as well. SPL and, and PR, Power and Infrastructure Resourcing, all these, they're just doing electrification. It's, there we are. We're so, so far from the end. What, how long have we been filming for? Oh, some minutes. We have... Uh, this is December, they, they drill holes in rails there, so they've probably got cold bolt expansion systems going on. Yeah, very nice. Uh, they also have a, a drill to drill, a drill saw, the mounted saw for sawing rails. Behind me here is, uh, is rail care. Uh, they have things like the ballast vac is a good example of some of the kit. Uh, actually behind me here is what looks like a... Is it steelwork or is it GRP? It could be GRP, it's hard to tell. Uh, actually, oh, it looks like GRP, these look like GRP units, yeah. So, um, uh, there's, there's a big gantry there, it's quite spectacular. Uh, but lots of, see, lots of different bits of kit, um, different tools for different jobs. Uh, oh, this is interesting, this is the Eurotunnel logo is behind me. No idea why. Uh, looks to be another big maintenance train. Uh, I could go and ask, but... It's quite interesting to see, oh, that's, that's kind of a little cafe going on there as well. Uh, obviously here is a slightly strange red, but how many layers of different branding can you fit onto one HST? There's a, there's a knackered looking HST, um, there it is, and uh, Network Rail branded, but in red, uh, is of course the, one of the new power cars for the, uh, for the NMT. Uh, so one of the other NMTs there in action. I'm at the, uh, the Bantz stand here. Bantz, they do all sorts of things. Whatever you want to know, the Bantz gauges, there they are, some, some cant and track gauges there. And uh, the, 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 the famous Bantz wheelie gig that you can ride on like, like your instant trillions. Uh, yeah, there's, uh, oh, these also the Smith lights there. I use those on site quite a bit. There's Ellis with lots of power, holding power, power equipment, cables, uh, cable mounts. Interesting, I saw some of these on uh, mount on the old platform at uh, Woodhead when I was there with Gary Keener earlier. Uh, I think Gary's around today, we might bump into him later. Anyway, I'm very pleased to say that uh, the Permanent Way Institution stand, which is behind me here, people I stand is, looking quite busy. My professional institution, proud member. Uh, oh, some... So there's British Steel. Now, they, British Steel has changed quite a bit over the last... Um, uh, hi Bridget. Uh, British Steel has changed quite a lot over the last uh, short while. Well, if you want to see what a stress tensor, let's go over here. Yeah, so I stand here. 
see there's the stress tensor stressing the rails for in, in uh, making sure you've got the right stress-free temperature more on that later what else we got there's British Steel uh, there is TV there's all sorts of things quick step uh, quick step here the kind of uh, debris staff there's look at this it's just kit everywhere all right now we're getting to surveying so uh there's obviously lots of mounted kit lots of people liking the new bridge which i was stood on earlier there it is behind me to give you an idea of the geography of the place uh, over here we have um pbh who do lots of topographical surveys they're, they're a great team they do a lot of survey stuff um ranging from the traditional survey using kit like this thing uh to much more modern forms of survey using for example the, the rail mounted wheel set there's the trimble kit there uh they use uh, all manner of stuff. PBH also put me out of a job by doing lots of, uh, they do lots of permanent way design now as well, so um, they do all sorts of PBH. Uh, good to see the crew there, it's nice. Also there's some drones, if you're a fan of drones, there's drones. Uh, mixed benefits for different sorts of things, so good for certain types of things depending on what the kit is, but actually we now have drone surveys that are accurate to band 1A, if you know what that means. Um, so they do, they do offer options. Uh, behind me here is Polypipe and they do um, what they say on the tin. <laughs> there is, uh, there's, there's some pipes. Some pipes. Now, what else have I got here? Uh, some heated coper stones. That's a clever idea. Uh, that's a very clever idea. So here, some coping stones and they're also heated uh, to stop them icing up. That sounds like a really good idea. You can see them, they're illuminated as well. They've actually got light platform, the kind of uh, coper edge lights. That's quite snazzy. Um, and as part of discussions, I've been having kind of long discussions. I'm about to see a chap that I've had phone calls with recently over some design stuff. Uh, it's the LB Foster tent. And here's LB Foster. They do they do all sorts of things, but one of the things they do is um, friction modifiers for improving the wheel rail interface. Whereas I do this, yeah, and the right. three of us are all here. When it look at the, so, so you've already seen me yeah. bumping into Charlie, uh, but there's, uh, there's Gary, there's Gary, Gary Keener is here, who, who both Rail Matter guests. Look at, look at it, it's all three of us in person seeing each other, it's nice, isn't it? Um, Gary, what are you looking for? Is there anything particular you're look looking for in I'm, real life? I'm are you just on your day shade off? Shade mainly and a day off. Shade and a day off. Yeah. A, day out, a day out of the office <laughs> and, uh, and a bit of networking. And it's, it's doing both. I've actually so. had several moments of like, oh, that's actually a really important conversation that has just not happened since yeah, the last exactly. one. That was actually really useful. This is what Rail Live is for, yeah. which is quite nice. Are you, are you, spot, are you out spotting and spying anything or are you I just soaking it in? Looked at the trams. Oh yeah, yeah, the old tram. Yeah. That, that is a reason to be here. There is stock here. Gary, come yeah. in the shop. We're all, we're all, wait a minute, I'll stand here. We are socially distancing. Yeah. We're not socially distancing very well, but we're outside. So from a risk perspective, it's fine. Yeah. Gary just social distance more because I made him nervous. Everyone saw, I've, I've seen one signal relating thing which made me very excited. Ooh. I saw a panel. There, there are saw, quite yeah, a few. I saw, I've only seen one panel, panel so far and I was like, ooh! <laughs> where? Where is it? It's back up there where, we've just, where we just came from. Can I go and have to have a look at the panel? Yeah, yeah. Right, uh, we're all melting so we're going to all dissipate. It wasn't going to be a long chat but uh, I, thought, I, thought, I thought you'd want to see us all meeting and sort of seeing each other in real it's life. It's the first time all three of us have met. That's true. Oh yeah, the first Together, time three of us like, are all in the same place at once. We do actually exist. We do. It's real. <laughs> It's not pretend, it's real. Uh, right, enough of that. Right, cheer cheerio everyone, see you, see you, see you shortly. So we're just, I'm just coming out of, what is it, zone uh, J? I think so. And, um, well, there's so much more, there's so much more. Uh, so we're gonna head, where are we gonna start? We're gonna start by uh, going into, if I do a spin, we're gonna start by going into the, uh, the Network Rail Village because they've got quite a few things here. So let's have a see what, what Network Rail have uh, scooped into their section. Oh, this announcement. There we go. So we have got this intelligent infrastructure. They're doing their bit explaining what intelligent infrastructure is. Uh, there they are behind us there. We've got Project Speed has got its own tent. That's exciting. I have to go and prod them later. Uh, we've got uh, materials recycling, aggregates recycling. We've got technical services there behind. These are all the bits of uh, all the various bits of network rail that do things and are, you know their initiatives that they're pushing forwards we've got training very important skills we've got design delivery which took over from nrdd that kind of took over from uh, like they well they've taken over from various bits dd is sort of in an ideal world maybe possibly dd would take take my job over and do all of this sort of consultancy work It'd probably be better for the industry to be honest but anyway that's kind of by the by uh, r&d portfolio the, 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 there's the network rail r&d portfolio there's what seems to be their little seminars. Should they've got a rail live 24 months, very snazzy. They had a huge site last uh, 2019. They've downscaled it a little bit. Uh, but uh, 
still looking smart. And we've got a load of there's a load of vans. They've got a Skoda. That's quite nice. The Nerecra branded, uh, superb there. Um, what else is going on? So, ah, the safety task force at the far end where they've got some explanations going on. Well, so we've got all oh, the bottle of water, which is very important. I've relied on that heavily uh, over the over the of the two days. Uh, sight lighting demonstration. Ah, I presume this is a, a blacked out tent that they've put some lighting in. Uh, well, maybe we're about to find out. We'll poke our head through this window and see, see what's going on. Yeah, indeed, they've got the yeah the lighting trials there. That's, that's quite good. Let's have a go in here. So, okay. That's quite, quite interesting. Novel ideas for illuminating the railway better. Let's speak to this gentleman here. Nathan's going to tell... Nathan, tell us about Dash Fights or Electronic. What, what? Um, so we do track warning systems, so we protect people on track. I see. Yeah, so we've got strike-ins and strike-outs set up, and then just behind you, you've got a couple of warning devices um, that are actually flashing oh, okay. at the minute. So, it's, so is it sort of TAUs? Is it a TAUs system, it, or is it kind of a bit more advanced similar. than that? Um, it's similar, but it, it's portable. You can move it anywhere. It's all portable and aerial, so... I was going to say, it looks very smart, it looks light, yeah. which is good, because the quicker you can deploy it, the quicker you've got, exactly. you've made the work safe, exactly. the workspace we've safe. You've got a nice little clamp on the floor that is installing the treadles in the track. Oh yeah. So you can actually install the treadles. I don't know if you're so not yeah, going to I was going to say, coming up, um, uh, coming, so these, these are treadles, you see these on site as per, in permanent kit, in fact, yeah. it's a fr this is a proper Frauscher treadle. It's exactly There's the, the treadle. same as what you see in the uh, lower Keep your boots away from them is always what you're recommended <laughs> to do. Well, exactly. Do we use the Frauscher ones because they're, they're tried and tested? Yeah, they people work. know the kit. Yeah. We connect all that into our bits of uh, so see the cable connections there the con connection yeah, so. into the kit there we are and see the kit in the background there by the time you've actually walked the lookout out you put the lookout in its position you're expecting that lookout to actually undertake the duty it's just as quick now to install this kit lights have got there you go oh, the in fact, there we go gone off. that means the train struck out but if i struck it in yeah you'd hear a very long loud sound and lights would be flashing Nice they're one. doing a meeting at half ten, so we've yeah, so we we'll keep the keep the quiet. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's exactly fair. Enough. I think that's fair enough. Nathan, right. thanks so much. That's, no that's great. Yeah. Cheers. Now there we go. Uh, as we say, the, the industry is not. It cannot be called a non-innovative industry. We're constantly developing, tweaking, playing with things to make things safer, quicker, easier, more efficient. Uh, yeah, fantastic. That's the network rail section. I think that was a nice little demonstration there from Nathan. So that was the network rail village. Um, now crossing over the tracks. Da, 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 da. Thanks, Maceo. Right, we're going over. I think I've already talked about these. Look, these. So they, they you see, they've got these uh, these tram tracks. See, we're about to cross them. They're being trialled. Slab and embedded track systems being trialled. So we've got um, some um, what appear to be yeah, user work crossing detection systems and signalling systems. There's a nice signal back there. Oh, let's go and have a look at the signal. There's a nice signal here. So see, nice. It's quite nice and clear for people using user work crossing so like just just foot crossings and stuff um, i'm sure they do lots of other things uh, we've got stuff the other side that we'll look at um ah, now here is the there's a Vosler test so we've been at the pandrel one uh, here's right light uh, i'll give you no guesses as to what the right light do there's right light that's right light um Vosler's tent there's direct track so this is interesting so edelon cedra as well have a have a little stand. So let's go and have a look at the Edelon Cedra stand. So if I turn around here, here is some of the various sort of embedded track systems that are quite, they're quite interesting. Um, so there we are. Perhaps talk about those in a bit more detail later. Perhaps not. There are Edelon Cedra. Um, Schwehag that do, uh, this is all the P-Way stuff out here. So on the other side, we've got, we've got direct track solutions here. They've got various tools, bars. You can see they've got um, kind of We've got a kind of a what do we call them banklers? They're not banklers. It's like calling a Hoover a Hoover. Um, there's a, a kind of a an in situ install IRJ fish plate. Very nice. Uh, in fact, let's get close to this. This is the, see this the Tenconi kit here. It's very nice. You specify these quite a lot. You can see the plate to insulate the two rails from each other. Um, what else? In fact, they've got all manner of biscuits and nylons uh, here. They've, got, they've even got wooden. Even got a wooden chair key there, just to show how much we still need those on our rail network. Uh, fish bolts, it's all the good stuff. You've got to get them from somewhere, right? And uh, here we are, there's the supplies. Thanks, thanks both. Thank Cheers now. They're looking going, what, what on earth is he on about? Um, that's McCulloch Rail. Uh, over here, we, in fact, the PCAT team are here. So, so I did some filming of PCAT. Um, 
and uh, oh, McCulloch Rail have also <laughs> brought one of their wheelie machines here, as you can see behind me there. The wheelie machine to carry rails around, they're fantastic. You don't think of it as that, you know, it's like, well, oh, what is that? But it's actually a very clever bit of kit. Right, here is, so this is also, so the PCAT, you can see also there, they've trialed lots of different, you can see them here, trialing lots of different materials. If I look the other way, you can see different materials there. There's the Union flag, lots of different materials on the other side materials on the other side there too showing how this thing can be kind of how this uh, embedded track can be incorporated the uh, the precast advanced track can be incorporated into the into the the urban landscape um you've got an integral points machine is nice oh you want to see inside a points machine here is a points machine the points operating equipment uh, that's a depot one i think um but uh yeah so that's quite cool little snazzy look inside there uh, very interesting so um oh here's the there's the uh, the pcat sort of trial section it shows you kind of what it looks like there um and it has these if i'm not mistaken it kind of has these yeah you can see the the kind of these these tensioning bars that these these things that go through and actually pull pull the thing together so it's pcat uh, Hi, Hi there. Don't forget to mention us. That's it. <laughs> that's mentioned by name. Phoenix signaling. There we go. There we are. That's, uh, they'll, uh, I'm sure they'll slip me a tenner later. That's fine. Um, this is the, the, the. So this is the, this is UK trams representation. Um, kind of one of the body. Well, one of the is the main sort of build hashtag build trams uh, sort of advocacy bodies uh, within the UK. Um, and yeah we need more of them and so we need people to be pushing that that case both on a kind of a policy side but also in terms of technical stuff and, and making things easier cheaper quicker and in terms of rail sections actually we've got some nice i don't see very often but uh some grooved rail out and about this there's, there's some grooved rail but not embedded you don't see that very often oh and also interestingly uh this is interesting for my day job actually there is a there is a, uh, a fish plate a junction plate connecting flat bottom rail and groove rail so it is a thing <laughs> for those who recently have been telling me it's not in my day job it is a thing anyway right uh there there's another one behind uh it's really only for light kind of light very light depot applications i wouldn't want that in running lines um should we hop over this i want to see what groove rail is like this there's the uh, the groove rail section there there's, there's the there's the keeper actually that was in that was last week's episode wasn't it when we were talking about those anyway enough of that um and behind me is just the just some more trial sections of of PCAT. Oh, it's very sunny and bright, isn't it? Uh, I'm walking on one of the little back roads, so this is kind of away from some of the stands, but uh, it's kind of interesting because you see some of the vehicles that have clearly been here for, for kind of, uh, these aren't here for display purposes, these are here for testing, I believe. So, you know, you've got, it's kind of quiet because this, this, it's actually evening time, even though goodness knows when this is going to be sequenced into the show. But uh, yeah, you can see there's a, a big, big wagon there. Uh, and uh, so this is this is display stuff, and this is kind of it's interesting. It looks like a miniaturised uh, sort of ballast cleaner. So you've got the, kind of the vac here, which you're about to see. That you see the conveyor belt. Um, there you go. That's, and then you can see behind me. So that's the that's the, the ballast going potentially into a truck. And then if I spin around as I kind of walk past here, you can see the there's the RRV, just kind of uh, pinned in. You can see there. There's the. Uh, the vac kit, so the ballast vac. Back down here and see what we can see. We're going to go back past the uh, the McCulloch Rail crew. They're, uh, I wonder if they've still got iron brew cans in their fridge because uh, they're quite thirsty. So if you don't know what McCulloch Rail do, they started out with, with kind of this, <coughs> well, it seems like quite an obvious thing to do, which is stop people moving rails around and make moving rails around a lot easier and do it in a confined space. And so they have machines that can now do it. With, you see cables, they've got cable runners. The machine I was next to a minute ago is for rails, moving rails. Uh, they now export that internationally. It's all over the place. The kit to do that is all over the place. So what else have we got? We've got approved hydraulics here with some very expensive looking hydraulic equipment um yeah look at the good grief i don't don't even begin to imagine what these things do but they're hugely complicated bits of kit um another time we've got welfare vans actually incredibly poor if you don't have good welfare you don't have a good site so actually it's incredibly important oh we've got gb rail freight at one end ah so maybe those the the uh the wagons they have are actually for our for our display benefit um his uh esl which um enabling intelligent infrastructure there you go and they have um they kind of do design installate there they're some of my direct competitors i'd imagine uh it's all right i do p way not OLE, so it's fine um now shwehag shwehag do roller base plates and slide base plates for s and c so there's some base plates there are base plates base plates base plates um 
the Shui Hag hat. Oh my goodness, I need a Shui Hag hat. Um, so that, in, in terms of the competition for the best merch, Shui Hag, by the fact they have a hat, is uh, they're, they're getting there now. Um, so what else have we got? We've got see some. You've got see some. Uh, there's some check rail base plates, all the different base plates for for S and C generally. So uh, that was Shui Hag. I got the free hat. What else have we got? We've got Force One here. Um, they're behind us doing various. Uh, kind of they, they, they've got that sort of uh, the ballast vac and a few other things going on uh, there's an empty Midlands engine tent let's not worry about that let's go this way track shore right behind oh, there's this serious sort of uh, this is, that looks like a, another ballast vac and there's sort of uh, there's, there's a, a, a track lift kind of track panel lifting machine uh, all sorts of kit there's just huge numbers of bits of kit everywhere right here's track shore and then next to track shore is um, is some well firstly is I think what we need to film here is this group of highly ac accurate Playmobil uh, <laughs> S and C men. Look, look at them go! They're in Playmobil and they're maintaining a track and they're Vossel. The Playmobil absolutely pulling a number there. Fantastic. Anyway, right behind me here is a um, is a swing nose crossing which you don't see very often. There it is. Um, the British Railway Network desperately needs more of these. In fact, Pete Cushing, the old L and E track ram, was desperate to get lots of these installed on the along the East Coast Main Line, and he never managed to get it done. In fact, again, last episode you saw the bimetallic section here to allow the connection between the two different types of uh, steel alloy. Um, yeah. Anyway, there it there it is. So, lots of tie-ins going on there. Well, anyway, so swing those crossing. Uh, it, 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 it's uh, oh, and also something else which is interesting, which we don't see enough of in the UK. They've got all the kit at the uh, at the Voslo stand. Um, See over there, that is a, well it's any kind of joint, it could be any kind of joint, but let's say for the sake of argument it's, a, it's an IRJ, you'll notice that there's a diagonal cut, a 45 degree cut through the rail rather than the traditional single face end. This is an obvious and genius way to reduce the track forces over a joint, and yet we still, most, all of our joints are just sort of straight rail end cut, which, uh, which is no good at all on a swap island because of the lactic acid. Anyway, there we go, so this is the Vossel kit. So much as I've spent loads of time in the Pandrel thing, Vossel, I'll be fair to Voslo. They've also got some very cool stuff here. Um, slightly heavier. What else have they got? Let's, let's go over here, actually. There's still stuff. They've got more Playmobil over here. No, they don't. It's fine. Hello. 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 Right, okay. So if you want to know what the difference, what a Voslo clip uh, looks like, well, the, the main difference is that you've got this, this screw-through bolt here. And this is just a standard sort of any old chair screw kind of machine can, can work these. Uh, I propose Voslo's for certain things because, um, generally because the overall system, if I'm proposing something a bit bespoke, that's often used in Europe, chances are the, the bespoke, well-tested, kind of service-proven kit will use Voslo fasteners. And so I'll just propose Voslo fasteners and the thing I'd take the maintainer is actually these are just this is a standard chair bolt thing you don't need anything fancy to maintain it you don't need any new kit it's easy so do that anyway there and you can see it's got the kind of these these kind of SKL clips the sort of stat these are the Voslo clips they're, they're kind of quite distinctive shape and there we go what else have we got oh we got another section so there's a nice there's a nice sort of uh, what looks like a 60 uh, get my hand out of shot this what looks like a nice sense 60 rail but also let's go and have a look at this groove rail because uh, I don't see groove rail very often um Here's a groove rail section with uh, again with Voslo with the and this this has kind of got the resilient this has kind of got the resilient pad so this can sit on um, well, I can sit on any surface you can sit on slab you can sit on sleepers but uh, also you can see the, the screw going through as well um, anyway there we go uh, so this is the W tram fastening system all of these I've been using a lot because I've been doing uh, light rail system design recently so hence why I'm sort of familiar with all this stuff in a way more vigorously than I might have been more recently anyway Voslo. Thanks Vossler team. There's the Vossler team behind me, uh, <laughs> cameoing in. Um, right, also there's a, look at this snazzy, f before I run off from Vossler, here's the high-speed grinding train. Looks very, look at this snazzy thing. Presumably it's in Playmobil scale as well. Right, so let's leave the Vossler team in peace and quiet. They've had enough of me. Cheers now. <laughs> so that was Vossler, that was quite interesting. Um, uh, oh, this is in routes into rail, ah, the routes into rail. So another thing about skills, very important. Um, we should have the routes into rail team on for a future rail natter actually. But, um, Yes, there is a career for everyone in the railways. That's a point I think you know I've made as regu regularly as I possibly can. Well, so we've got, we've got more, oh, there's the lighting kit. Uh, there's Shannon Rail as well, there's Shannon Rail. They often do site hire equipment. Uh, lots of good stuff for, you can see the sort of various site kit and site welfare is very important. We've got uh, Cloud, actually I'll tell you who I haven't heard, I haven't seen, well, there are a couple of uh, manufacturers I haven't seen their kit yet. There are lots of companies here and I don't know what they do and I don't want to sound trivial and I'm, I don't know what they do. It's just because the rail industry is a hugely complex and diverse one. People, there's all sorts of companies doing all sorts of things. Um, this isn't a railway company, they just sell pizzas. They're just selling some pizza there, you can see pizza. 
Uh, what else have we got? Got a nice section of demonstrator rail here behind me. Lovely. Uh, I think they might have been doing oh, look, look. If you want to see the difference between a, uh, a sort of disc cut and a, what am I doing? A disc cut and a uh, flame cut rail. This has nothing to do with rail live, but there you go. There's, there's flame cut, there's disc cut. You don't want to weld into that surface. Anyway, let's keep trotting on here. We've got some, uh, there's some, some bolted joints. For, so, so a clamps joint, sorry, when uh, things have gone wrong and you need to clamp some joints. Uh, what else we've got? There's rail signalling and power. Oh, you haven't seen much EMP kit, so that, that's happening. If I look down here, you can see lots of these axle counters. Um, there we are, and they do, they do the same thing. They count axles, they count trains in and out of sections. Um, there's some B-roll, nice B-roll coming up, showing them the various systems. There's all sorts of things they can do with axle counters that are above and beyond uh, just counting axles. So that's that's Frasher. Uh, in fact, there's, there's, there's a lot of Frasher sensed on it. There's various kind of remote sensing stuff they do. They have their hands in quite a few pies. Um, now, now this is an interesting section. Here is Aquarius, a local, local to be from, they're from North, um, which is nice. Uh, let's go. Let's go and show you. So this is this is a very shiny new version. But it, they started out with the. Uh, if we go over here, stop filming my chest. If we go over here, um, you can sort of see the classic Aquarius vehicle, which is the the Defender. The Defender with its uh, road rail capabilities, they didn't see the road rail wheels, uh, which is quite fun. Um, but they, there's all sorts of cool things to do. So one of the things I talked about last, oh, not last time, 2019, was um, the road rail sort of de uh, kind of ve veg vegetation treatment, kind of, you know, see this, this thing enables, it's a weed control system and it, it just saves lots and lots of staff hours in, and, and time and, and of course there's risks associated with that. Um, in, in reducing time by, by simplifying that process of spraying weed killer everywhere. So that's quite clever, really. Um, now let's go this way. Let's see if we can see, let's see if Abby's around as well, actually. Catch, catch Abby going through. I think Abby's on the set, so she, she is. We'll, we'll, leave, we'll leave Abby to it. She's on the, on the sales pitch. Um, I'm not here to buy things, whereas other people are, so it makes sense to spend time on them, not on me. What else have we got? We've got they sell boots. There's a company that sells boots. There's a crate. The Aquarius have got, well, they've got their goodie bags. They used to do duck, they had a thing where they, you could use a crate. In fact, I think they might still have it. They had a thing where you could use a crane to collect ducks in 2019. That was quite, uh, that was quite the thing. There's also some goodies bags. Well, I don't know what's in the goodie bag. It's, here's a, here's a nice Defender with a, with a trailer. Classic Defender with its, uh, yeah. It's the Defender. It's not got its road rail kit on the front, but that's fine. Uh, and then there's CHS who do uh, who do general site site equipment hire. So it's uh, useful. Are they doing anything on this test section? No, they're not. But they can see they've been doing some pile tests. They've, they've, they've got a different pile down here, and they've got some 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 troughing route as well. Anyway, um, let's go this way. Uh, I th I think there's been some. Um, there's some, some ah, there's not enough EMP representation here. You've got some load boxes and various bits of uh, of kit uh, behind. Here is um, class 153 long uh, John Longitude Harrison, who's the inventor of the marine chronometer. There. Anyway, it's a, a class 153. I hate these trains. They're a gauging nightmare. They fall into bits. They they were built really on the cheap, so they they sag horribly. Uh, anyway, yeah. So. They've also got a crew because I think the BTP are about to do, do their thing, work their magic. I might be about to get the tackle. Half past apparently. Okay, so I need to make sure I'm uh, somewhere safe at half 11 so I don't get wrestled to the ground. We talked about the helicopter, there's the NRA Ops uh, uh, kind of uh, tent. To do, uh, always worth a look. So uh, what else? We've got Limeworks here who do... Uh, well, all sorts. We've got, they've got, uh, we've got anchor systems who do support systems for troughing and other things. So you can see their kit there. Um, what else? Right, this is we're now in the last sort of section. So let's see, let's see if I can get from this. Let's trace in the X-Rail team there. Let's, let's say hi to the X-Rail team behind there. They're all waving. Hello. <laughs> let's go this way now. So there's the X-Rail tent. Uh, they do all, they do all sorts. It's difficult to list everything X-Rail do because they, they have their fingers in a lot of pies. So what, what else have we got? So this is where we've got some some sort of slightly less heavy and slightly more, as there's a mixture of sort of, uh, uh, some of the organizations are here, um, but there are still some, some bits of kits. There's some precision kit uh, here. There's a MMB precision. Uh, we've got uh, some security systems here for protecting sites. We've got Aquaspira here who do uh, big, 
big tubes. I think that's, that's the way to describe it. Night searcher. So you've got uh, head torches. We've got uh, we've got the rail alliance behind us. There's the rail alliance. We've got my uh, my my former and then not former again uh, employers at Encati as well. Say hi to Encati. Uh, there we are. There's the the national. This is the National High Speed Rail College uh, team. Uh, what else have we got? We've got um, various bits of supply chain. We've got people chatting on stage. This is quite interesting. I wonder who it is. So I am inside the... I'm on my own here, so that's why I'm not wearing my mask. Um, I'm inside the seminar tent. Is that what they're calling it? The seminar theatre, sorry. Um, which is a, a, allowed 50 people in. 55? I think I showed you the sign at the start, didn't I? Anyway, uh, in here, where all the great and the good have been having their chats, they're getting interrogated by by Nigel. Um, yes, uh, and so uh, quite a few of those videos, in fact all those videos should be available around about when this episode goes out, which is in a week from when it's happening. Um, yes, but this is, I thought I'd show you, you know, give you a bit of a, an exclusive look. There's this theatre here, this, this stand here, the pedestal here where uh, people have been appearing saying their piece. Um, uh, yeah, and in fact later on as I'll show you, Mr. Peter Hendy was up here saying a few things about the Treasury that were perhaps interesting, uh, worrying I suppose in some aspects and <laughs> cool measure. Anyway, we'll get there. But uh, yeah, I just thought I'd give you, this is this is the, the main stage if you like, uh, a little smaller than the big the big tent was in 2019, but uh, given that we've had a more outdoor event for, for obvious reasons, I think it works quite well. There's the RR and the Samaritan stand. The Samaritan stand is a very important one. See, as an industry, we unfortunately get exposed. Hello, this is the Samaritan's team saying hi. Hello, they're all waving there. We've got the, uh, the RR team as well there. We've got uh, Catherine Gibb. Hi, Catherine. Um, the RR, they're very important. When I received a DM from the RR saying come to the RR stand. And I have to say, saying come and see us tomorrow from the RR was a really scary moment. I don't want to repeat that again. <laughs> so uh, thanks, RR. <laughs> I think I'm going to be coming back and filming some stuff with them later. Um, anyway, there's the RR and, and Samaritans. Uh, obviously, Ian Prosser cares very deeply about the Samaritans, uh, so that's why that uh, seems a sensible thing for the two of them to be together. Healthy employers. You see, there's lots of organisation test works. So they do testing and, and sort of various bits and lots of. There's still some some sort of heavy kit out here. There's some in, Inspector Hire Instruments Company. That's, that's some interesting stuff. Um, Fraser Nash Consultancy, lots of organisation. Basically, this is kind of more of the high tech stuff, more of the sort of high level stuff. We've got X Rail, we've got uh, this Comic Metrology Limited. They do, I don't know what they do, I'll talk to them later. But Google them because if they're here, they're probably quite good. And of course, we have well, Lucy's got done a runner. Lucy's not here, but there's three squared. There's three squared. And then on the other side, we've got, there's the other side of X Rail, they're greedy, they've got two, uh, two entrances to there to their kit. Uh, right, anyway, that's that, and on this side we've got uh, the, the dogs, the dogs are out doing their thing. Uh, in fact, here's Lucy. Let's find Lucy. I'm gonna jump up behind her now, because she's behind me and she's in the middle of writing a tweet, I'd imagine. <laughs> Lucy, hello. hello! Hello, Lucy. How are you doing? How's, how's Rail Life been this year? Oh, it's you fantastic. Really That's really the most really generic good. question I could possibly think of. Rail Life is wonderful. It's been so good to meet people. How generic is that? Basically? I know, right. It's, <laughs> it's, it's two, we've had two years of just like being like, not seeing people who we're used to seeing and catching up with regularly yeah. and, and it's the opposite of RSI plugin. I know, right? So I've I know. Been wearing I know. That certificate that proves I'm double jab. So well, I can people, people, people can, do people can be approached. Skin. I've only got one jab, which means I'm, I'm essentially toxic. You have to be careful of me. But I'm uh, all right. And, 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 and I, keep, I keep doing my laterals, so I, I know that you're safe. <laughs> That's it. Anyway, right, I'm going to leave Lucy in peace and quiet to finish writing her tweet and also continue watching the dogs as well. You can meet my colleagues if you like. Becky and Catherine th and Martin. Becky and Catherine and Martin, the three squared colleagues. They're all waving. Three squared. I mean, it's a three squared episode of rail now don't yay. we yeah, that's a, a yay from lucy right anyway right, leave you later, right. thanks team cheerio right that i think that now rounds up our our um oh there's 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 some chaos going on that i think rounds up our um our experience of, of walking around all of rail life but there's lots of stuff that we still have to go and see so i'm going to pick up lots of individual little bits here and there uh and um yeah so so some of the things i've spotted i'll maybe go and have a look at in closer detail let's let's do some of that and see what happens This is the this is the Stadler stall, which is exciting because I've said a lot of nice things about Stadler and I, I, I rate their trains. So I'm actually going to walk around here. Look at this! Look, it's fantastic. Here it is. Here is the trip. In my mind, to my mind, the finest metro units not yet in service in the UK. Absolutely fantastic. And um, the most important thing about these is a thing I'm going to go and look at 
in just a moment. You can see, so already you can see, if I come down here, you can see the Toblerones here. These, these, uh, these, these kind of protrude from the body shell, um, uh, salt kind of just above the sole bar. These are uh, designed to out, uh, kind of add that additional PTI protection for people dropping down that gap. So I've stood next to the mock-up, which is in one of the uh, in one of the tunnel shafts, kind of the ventilation shafts in the above the one of the Mersey tunnels, and, and it's nice to be next to an actual real real vehicle. David Powell and the crew, you can uh, consider yourself, you should be very proud of this unit. Look at it's a very smart train. Look at that stretching off into the distance. Um, I'm going to wander along here a little bit. Well, also, by the way, fair play to Scott Parnell. We're on one of their temporary platforms. It's a fantastic unit. What's the other thing that's super important about these trains? Well, it's down here. It's this. It's the it's the protruding gap filler. And you can see there, that is what level boarding is. That is level boarding. These are the first trains designed around actually allowing passengers to get on and off, which you'd think it's a bit daft. Well, it is a bit daft. Um, oh, look at this down here as well. That's nice. Little thing saying the speed there. That's probably in reverse, isn't it? Anyway, um, here I am on a platform with a 777. Let's go and have a look inside, shall we? So, uh, right, let's dive hello, up this train. Before we do that, there's, there's not only have I got yeah, hello, Gordon hello, off of Nodrog on one side, we have Gary Essex here, and then there's Jeff Marshall, who some of you might have heard of. It's very yellow. It is a very, really it's very yellow. It's and the I first time it. I'm meeting in real oh, life. Sorry. And it happens to be next to a, the, that's an extra train that, yeah, I know, right? It happens to be an extra train that we both care about quite a lot because it's designed around letting people on, which I said a minute ago and probably won't edit out. But anyway, that's, that's quite a handy feature to have a train that lets people on. It is, on. I thought so, but <laughs> apparently they haven't been doing that for a long time. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It is. Right, anyway, I'm going to nip on this train. Thanks, Jeff. Lovely to see you. Cheerio. Uh, cheers, Gary. Yeah, nice. Good to see you. Uh, Gordon behind us as well. Right. So I'm, I'm stepping on now. You see, there we are. Gap filler. These trains are fantastic. They're smart trains. It's not just a one trick pony. You know, the level boarding is not. The, these are competent metro trains. Uh, for example, if I look behind me, you can see the, uh, there's the cycle area is quite nicely marked. Uh, actually, it's got quite good. If I come this way, actually, it's got quite good. Good, um, quite good fitting for the cycle, so I'm actually quite pleased with that. This is a metro train, but it has cycle capacity. That's also really good. So you know, these are designed to allow people to use them. So let's have a walk through, shall we? We're actually walking past one of the engineers who's in charge of uh, managing these new trains. It's quite good. Dave Powell behind, actually. You can see David as well, uh, looking in, in command of things. And um, these are their train. They work very hard. Mersey, Mersey Travel um, work very hard to make these trains uh, work to get them running. They've also also They've got the, the platform edge, sorry, the, the, the door edge lighting, which is very good as well, which you'll see. Oh, I'm down in the quiet bit now. Look at this. It's the first time I've been in one of these and I'm very excited. Really nice build quality. The finish is, is really nice on these. I think they're quite smart, as David Powell's about to walk past. Excuse me. <laughs> Hello, Gareth. Well, they've got, they've got panels for information are kind of quite nicely spread around. They've got USB charging points, loads of them. Uh, they can see tip up seats for prams. These are just well thought through trains. They're trains that have been well thought through. Um, you know, they step up bit because they are, they also have Jacob's bogies, which is a novelty. Uh, now we're going to go up this end to see what I can see at the front. So they're advertising what they're doing. They're, they're advertising independently. It's, it's a battery unit. They call it the IP EMU. Uh, which is the independently powered electrical multiple unit. They charge the battery from the, the third rail. Right, I'm going to wait until uh, David finishes, and I'm going to go and have a look at the cab. So I'm, I'm currently sat, hi everyone, I'm currently sat in, in, in the driver's seat of a, uh, of a class 777. <laughs> it's very nice of Stadler and uh, Mercy Travel to let me sit here. Um, there are lots of buttons of which I'm going to press absolutely none of them, you'll be reassured to know, because I'll break things immediately and get told off. Also the aircon is on, which is why I've stayed in here far too long. There, you've got a nice view inside, you can see the GSMR, and there's the, it feels pretty comfy. As a, as a driver, I'd be pretty pleased in here, I think. It's quite nice. Very nicely cushioned. Lovely job. But right, very quickly, before I run off this train, I, I'm here with, uh, with with two people. We've got James James Welling as, as James, hello. And we have David Powell. David is, uh, well, I think you've already heard on previous episodes, I said we want David on for an episode because we want to talk about the story of these trains. Um, but firstly, James, um, these are the 777s. Uh, we both, I mean, we're both biased because we love these trains, but there's a reason for that. James, what do you think of these trains? What's so important about these uh, trains compared to other units operating? Um, accessibility, really. These trains, they're, they're revolutionary. They should be standard. You don't need uh, station staff to help you off. You don't need guards to help you off. Um, you can go anywhere on the trains. Just basically, it's like DLR before North. 
Yeah. That's how I'd describe it. Like. Yeah, Don't so it's a slight way away from London. Yeah, that's such a really nice way of describing it, actually. It's accessible, uh, independent ac access. Well, a lot of people say, oh, ramps are fine. That's not the point. It's not independent access, is it? So, uh, David, these trains, this is the first time people are getting a chance to see these kind of punters like myself are getting a yeah, chance to see these first, trains. First time out in public. But for you, these you've been spending quite a lot of time on these. How long now have you been working on this particular... How, how long has it been going now, that this project, for well, you? Nearly nine years. Nine years. So, when I arrived, it wasn't even a blank sheet of paper. Yeah, yeah. We had to design the, the sheet yeah, of paper. Yeah, to design the paper. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's it. But, you've, but actually, these you know, the trains have now been in, in, in testing, and you're, you know, obviously there's still quite a bit to do to, to get them in service, but it's getting closer, the process is going well, you're happy with progress. It is, we're nearly at the end of testing. The unit we're on here has, has, has been fitted with uh, batteries to see what our characteristics are running, running on battery. We're just assessing the results, but the tests looking very good so far. We're very pleased. We're working with our colleagues from Stadler to determine wh whether this is a viable proposition for our network. And then the rest of the test is just about complete. Got one of our testing managers is standing over there watching me. So <laughs> I've already. I, I, I better say all the right things. Yeah, but I was right, say, worked really, really yeah. hard on it. <laughs> yes. I am. Um, yeah, I was, I was. I was saying nice things to Stadler earlier, saying, "Look, Stadler, these these uh, these trains are fantastic, and I've been telling everyone to buy more of them." So uh, uh, as best as I can. So look, there, there's, there's, there's the Stadler people are happy. I also spoke briefly in German to them, so I, I was winning all my brownie points. Anyway, right, I'll leave you both in peace and quiet. Thanks, James. Thanks, David. We'll have you on a natter. Uh, Thank you, Gareth. Hopefully Garrison. soon. I look forward to it. Um, and uh, and uh, yeah, let's let's. let's crack on shall we? Hi everybody, we just oh. about to leave so could I ask you all to sit down or hold on please? Thank you. Not not the, the first, but amongst the first um UK passengers of the triple Senate, some some eager beavers here, including oh we are moving that's us moving, that's me falling over. Um We've got Gary down here on a battery train. This is a battery powered train. Gary yes, is on I it. I'm on a battery train. It's <laughs> really happening. <laughs> it works. To prove we're moving, there is stuff moving past us at about one and a half miles an hour. It's very exciting. So we're, we're only going to move about 200 meters. But um, yeah, I thought you'd, you'd be interested to see, you know, fresh pasture, 777. That the seats are nice. It's just, it's glorious. Anyway. You might be wondering why there's a willy here in this uh, Warwickshire field. Well, it's because this is, as I said earlier, this is a, or might say in a moment, who knows what the edit will come out with. Uh, oh, there's the NMT. More on that in a second. Um, there's different OLE you can see because it's a, it's a test, it's a trial site. So they're trying lots of different bits of technology, fitting it, uh, seeing how the kit compares and kind of leaving it out to see how it bears up in the various kind of challenging Warwickshire conditions. Um, no, uh, enough about OLE though, uh, because there's a diesel <laughs> HST. The other side of me here it is, look, it's, uh, it's a class 43 with its buffers. Uh, it's Mark Karn, I think. Is that the name? Yeah, it's got the nameplate on the side. Um, there it is, looking yellow. So Network Rail let me ride on uh, their uh, on their track recording train, not the uh, not the NMT. I'm gonna have a little bit of a ride around, and hopefully I'll uh, be able to talk through a bit of what, what's uh, what's happening on the train. So uh, stay tuned. Um, actually, the, the, the NMT is it was introduced in 2003, and as a result of being kind of more recently introduced, is now got quite a lot of much older kit on it so it's a bit more out of date um flying banana so the nmt it's uh yeah former hst introduced in 2003 i think um, and the point of its introduction was that because it can run at higher speeds run at 125 miles an hour if it wants to um, it can fit amongst kind of existing passenger timetables without causing too much disruption rather than running slow and we're going to walk through it from one end to the other. Um, Network Rail let me hop on their um, their track recording train for me to write a piece. I spoke to Haley and the team, um, which was uh, which was fantastic. But I haven't published the piece yet because I didn't quite find something to hang it on. So uh, that piece will still be uh, published. Still, they've got lots of explainers along here, which is really good. <laughs> The six foot camera, that's very good. Um, yeah, they're pointing lots of things. Omnicom Balfour BT there, showing that their kit is involved. Anyway, right, enough of me waffling. I think I'm gonna hop on and have a walk through. So I'm stepping into the uh, into the NMT. Um, it's, just, it's all quite, uh, it's all quite, look, see, there's a, there's a mind your head full rubbery bit there. Um, 
So this is the NMT. This is a train that runs at 125 miles an hour and does many, many things. Uh, if I if I walk in this way, you can see uh, behind me, it's low roof. And um, this kit, I mean, there's just a huge amount of kit. So this 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 uh, this happens. This coach happens to have uh, this is the business end, and there are lots of servers, bits and pieces. This this stuff here, all this and this, and then. Well, behind me over here as well, there's a bit of a queue. This stuff here is all here for the uh, for the lead. So it's measuring heights and staggers. It's a camera. It's checking wear on the kit, on the contact wire. Huge amounts of stuff. And um, this section does. Now, if I uh, if I just look down here, this stuff here. This is uh, this is the plane run pattern recognition racks uh, of which there are. Well, there's a huge amount. If I stand here, you can sort of see there's all this kit. It doesn't look very dramatic, but there's also lots of boxes and cabinets worth of kit. Anyway, this, to give you an idea of the amount of data. So the PLPR, I'll show you in the screens in a minute. PLPR is plane line pattern recognition, which is uh, basically looking for things that aren't quite right on the track. So, for example, uh, looking at missing clips or broken sleepers or sometimes when ballast is too, there's too much ballast those, those sorts of things to give you an idea of how much data you know these cameras are incredibly high resolution you can pick up the ingredients on the back of a crisp packet sort of sat in the track it's that level of high resolution accuracy huge volumes of data there's also rail profile scanners as well that are part of this um to give you an idea of that, that level of data in in one shift they can fill up so these are the empty empty sort of hard drive racks that's uh that's one two terabytes then three terabytes four terabytes five six seven eight nine nine terabytes of data in just one shift huge amounts of data enormous amounts of data those are the racks with all the kind of all the kits sort of uh, mounted up to actually do the the, the data handling but in terms of where the interface is with the with the people actually in the train uh, well that will be done here at these workstations there we are you can see the workstation they've pasted nice a3 pictures showing what happens on each one um, so you can see that at the far end there you've got the OLE and in the middle here you've got plane line pattern recognition and then behind me here on this workstation is uh, is the, the, the geometry recording so you've got you know, you've got the, the new system here actually which is true operator true track 2 I think which should be rolling out soon um, replacing the old system here uh, the old true track uh, system uh, and uh, all the other things of course is the real time so you can see at the far end there the white one uh, that's, that's kind of uh, that one is the real time positioning system so if you're used to the Omnicom, if you've got the Omnicom app with the real-time positioning system, this uses that, you know, with, with greater accuracy, it uh, uses that to make sure that it tallies up where all those, all the, the issues are. What happens is, so plane line pattern recognition works in that picking up all this data, whenever it spots a problem, it picks it up as a candidate, that candidate then goes to, um, to a, a, someone who's not on the train to um, pick up whether that is a whether that candidate is actually an issue or whether it's just something slightly different like an IRJ or some something that looks a little bit different to the system. But now a lot of people talk about I'll tell you what, let's let's walk this way. Well we've got some servers next to us. Some more servers. These are all the, the interfaces so if they're plugging a different coach in then then they have to rewire what's talking to what. Very, very complicated, very cool. So um oh here's a nice bit, just the just some, some oranges on a rack. So uh no, no, there's also the name of the vehicle there. We're in the uh, the development vehicle. You hear a lot of people talk about AI and deep learning and machine learning and all this stuff and the wonders that that, uh, that that can bring the thing with that is that it requires a huge amount of data so in lots of instances you just can't get the level of data that's, that's useful that's where all of the network rail yellow fleet is different they are generating as we just saw per shift seven plus two nine ter terabytes of data and very high quality data that is perfect for deep learning and as a result of that deep learning those candidates are being identified more accurately so where you know it, it, the system is now categorizing candidates so it's recognizing when there's too much ballast it's recognizing when there's a you know what type of fault it is which is reducing the amount of workload for, originally everything it was perceived that everything would happen on the train actually uh, that just didn't happen and ended up that you had um there are staff kind of um, based based elsewhere who who had to interpret that data but now the deep learning has got to the point now where they they are going to be able to bring a lot of the work back on so it's all happening on the train so deep learning is is often quoted as a wonderful tech solution to things but it, it, it rarely is this is an instance where it actually is because there is sufficient volumes of data to 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 interpret and then potentially to predict um the key thing is tying all the different data sets together that's always the key thing anyway so that was a little walk through the nmt and behind me over here actually over here is uh, is the conference room it's very snazzy we uh won't worry about that too much so 
also all the, you want to see some of the giant buttons in fact there's a big like data big red mash this button to stop everything uh, button on the work um, the, uh, one of those workstations which I thought was brilliant uh, right anyway we're going to mind our heads we're going to step off the train and uh, that was the NMT I'm uh, going to get my hand out of shot The thing that I'm currently staring at now, I was uh, sitting on top of earlier, uh, showing you the, the size and the scale of the of the overall rail life site. But uh, let's, let's spin around. There is, there's the, there's the bridge. I'm sure there's some B-roll I can uh, fling up momentarily. There it is. Um, but I thought it was worth saying a couple of things about it, because I spoke to the engineer, a couple of the engineers who worked on it. Um, firstly, obviously this isn't DDA, it's not, you know, it's not accessible. This is stairs only. But the reason for that, that, that I spoke to them and they said, to be honest, that they don't expect this to be the main one that they, in fact, they don't expect many of these to be built in this design. But the reason they went for the stairs one is because it's the smallest of the, uh, of the ones they wanted to fabricate as a full-size prototype. So it made sense for this to be the first that they did. So, but it looks fantastic. You know, you look, it's got these, the whole point of it is that it's, so it's uh, yes, it's made of, of fiberglass and, and composites, but the point is that it's lighter, requires less substantial foundations, is therefore quicker to erect, requires fewer vehicle movements to get the bits in the right place, um, and as a result of that, let's let me stand with it behind me. As a result of that, um, it can be the, the carbon footprint of the of the bridges is massively reduced. So um, really quite cool. So I'm out here, I'm talking quietly because behind me, Sean is giving everyone a, Sean off of uh, very much recommended Twitter feed. Uh, if you go to the NRA Ops uh, Twitter feed, it's also very good, but Sean's giving a bit of a presentation. So I'm gonna keep my voice down. I think you can hear me anyway. But the reason I'm here is because, yeah, that's right. It's one of, the, one of well, that two of the network rail helicopters. Uh, these produce fantastically useful uh, information of all different types. The stuff that I use most commonly is the um, is actually the, the overhead aerial views, really high resolution, really high quality, really good, um, really good source of data for me as a design engineer. But uh, yeah, I thought I'd come up and uh, so we've been next to trains, but here I am next to a helicopter. In fact, let's let's, let's get a selfie. Let's go, let's go for the selfie one with me and a helicopter. <laughs> This one here is some PDG services who sort of do the they kind of administer administer these. There it is. It's the it's the uh, Scotland's Railway branded one. There, Scotland Railway. Be was it better in the making? They always come up with new uh, clever brands. Look, it's a look, it's the business end. I don't even want to stand near it because it looks sharp and scary. Anyway, network rail helicopters. But the, the most important and interesting part is actually down here. So we're going to go down here. It's not these. It's not the. It's not the foot pedals that make it spin around in different directions. Uh, I actually did a helicopter training, so I, I, I couldn't fly one of these, but I vaguely know what the sticks do. You've got the collective and the cyclic in there. Anyway, enough of that. This is the important bit down here. This thing, this incredibly powerful uh, data collection tool, shall we say. Very powerful cameras, but also all sorts of other, other spectrums of, of data collection as well. Just, um, yeah, fantastically, fantastically useful. And here, of course, is the, is the mascot sat at the front. <laughs> anyway, the network rail helicopter is very, 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 very cool. I promised you I'd come and speak to Abby at Aquarius, and uh, and I have Abby. Hello, as hello. a lo localish, right? Rough in the north. We're a northern northern company, so yeah, come, yeah, come yeah, to absolutely. Sing. From Yorkshire. That's it. Yeah, yeah. The Yorkshire company. So, um, uh, well, actually, first thing, the last time we chat, I, I wrote a piece uh, in in Rail Magazine two years ago about about kind of all of this, and I yeah. sp spoke about. I think I spoke about your weed killing kit, and yeah, I was explaining did, yeah. how explaining how it seems like a not a big, but actually huge huge impact on safety and so on. Um, yeah. So Absolutely. it's been two years. Yes. How, what, what, what were you thinking before coming, and how's the show been this year? Are you kind of has it been all right, or are you really pleased at how many people have come? Like, what, what do you think? Okay, well we're out in the fresh air, so COVID-wise, fantastic. It feels very safe, socially distant, etc. Um, absolutely brilliant to be back. Absolutely brilliant. So we are so excited to be here. We've got lots of new kit, lots of exciting things going on. So it's been fantastic. Yeah. Great to get our new, brand new innovation oh, yeah. team. I was going to say, 
brand new innovation he's, team. Yeah, so we're all sadly not on the stands at the moment because they're busy <laughs> chatting to people <laughs> elsewhere. <Yeah. laughs> but Slash having lunch. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 they're chatting, they're definitely, they're, they're definitely, definitely chatting. Work. They're um, <laughs> so, so yeah, so they're out there, um, but it's brilliant to bring the innovation team that have been sort of in, you know, at our company for a year, out into the rail industry. So a lot of them are from Show the industry. Yeah, okay, so, yeah. so let's go have a look. Yeah, at I was going to say, let's, let's go, to, yep. show me some of the, there's a new bit of kit you definitely want to show me that's that's quite exciting. So let's yeah. let's go and have a look at that, this. Uh, so it's the new road to rail D-Max. We're calling it the future of road to rail. Ooh. It's a site. Mm -hmm. so, and this is it hit just here. Oh, all right. Let me I'll flip let round. Yeah, I'll flip round and I will so. The doors. All right. So this is it. This is it. This is the, the D-Max. You can see it's very snazzy. It's a bit of an upgrade from the Defender. We love the Defenders, but uh, this is... This is comfortable, refined. Yeah, that's it, yeah, yeah. Very, very capable. On rail, it can take two of our road-to-rail trailers. So you get three ton on the front, three ton on the back. So it's so it really is about it's about extra capacity. It's about achieving more within one possession. It's absolutely it's all this stuff speeding up. Getting and safely. Boots off the ballast. Working in green zone. Maximising the very short possessions we have. Working under live OLE. Working any line open. It's, just give you a feel for the scale of this thing. So it's 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 this is not just a road vehicle kitted out. These things are bespoke made. They are they like are, they're yeah. very much rail rail design bits of kit. Yeah. They are and they have all the bells and whistles to make working on the railway uh, safer, easier and more yeah. more pleasant, frankly. Yeah, they've got 360 camera system on them, so the camera's oh, nice. there. Yep. So you see the cameras at the front, cameras at the back there, yeah, yeah, lovely. So it's nice and got a nice 360 view all the way around, the safest possible way that we can do do work on things. There. Fantastic. We try, we try and build that safety and yeah. simplicity into everything. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks, Abby. Very really... excited. Yeah, I was going to say, it's exciting. It's, 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 uh, it's the new kit. Thanks for your time, Abby. Thanks for, thanks yeah, for the catch thanks, up. Sarah. Now, I talk a lot about platform renewals and the need for a rolling program of platform upgrades. Um, in some instances, that's just a very little fettling of an existing coping stone. In others, it's a total platform rebuild. You know, we need platform extensions. There's a huge amount of work needed. And uh, one of the things I've noticed in, uh, in the show is how many options there are available to, to engineers uh, and to, to specifiers uh, to actually, you, you know, options at platforms you know we've got we've seen some grp um but one of the examples i've seen here is uh, is megatech projects here have um they have here what i think is a very clever idea and i think i certainly remember it being used at peterborough which is the which is if i show you here this i mean not to put fine a point too fine a point it is a polystyrene block that is strong enough to then sit basically a standard coping and sort of uh, platform surface you know it's one big concrete slab uh, designed to make it sort of uh, sort of structurally sound but this is it's like what you can see there are loops here for lifting it into place these can basically be lifted in as a single unit um, and means that you get a very rapid platform extension so for example you might find that it's easier to demolish a platform uh, as it exists and actually lift this in as an alternative it, it, you know, maybe not a platform extension but a platform reconstruction so it's just interesting seeing the various different options that are available uh, here we are nice nice coping stone you can see i was talking about shininess this one's a bit shinier than the uh, than the other ones were the uh, the other concrete ones anyway there we go uh, megatech projects there with their with their modular platform extension I'm running to get on a train, which is traditional for me. Uh, this is the TFW. Uh, this is the uh, the transport. There it is. The, the 
and this is it. This is the uh, it's the Viva Rail train. It's very red. That's my immediate instinct as I've just hopped on. Look, it's a very smart looking train. Everyone's it's eerily quiet in here. Everyone's exhausted having been out in the sun all day. Now I'm going to hold on in case it runs off and I fall over. This is the Viva Rail. It's a 2.30, I think. Um, and I said I'd get on one, and I'm not going to be as nerdy as Jeff and Gordon probably were in their videos, but it's quite nice to see the best, partly because I really like the TFW Wales, uh, the, the Transfer of Wales branding, I think is really good, so I quite like that, it's quite vivid, it's quite striking. Um, it looks very smart right behind me here, I'm going to keep holding on to this so I don't fall over. It's nice, open gangways. For the passengers who get on here, I think they'll probably think it feels like a new train. Um, it looks smart, it's quite bright and airy, it's quite good. I think it's on, it's on battery mode as we speak, it's quite... It's hard to tell because the track's so rubbish, you can't really judge the ride quality. But uh, I can see USB ports, see chargers, the seats look comfy. Everyone's doing their very best to socially distance at this point as well. That's yeah, great! So I'm now going to ride to Danny Bourne and back. <laughs> I'd have a, a bit of a walk. This, there's the, uh, there's the, just the uh, accessible toilets there. A bit of a walk through the. Uh, oh, this, that's also nice. We're in Honeybourne, and there's a, an IET pulling in the back. That's nice, isn't it? Um, one of the few rare breed at the moment. Here, so I thought I'd walk through. Actually, I'll let this, let this chat through. No worries. Let them, let them get on with actually running the train. Um, there's, there's the IET in the background just pulling in. Oh, that's the buzz buzz. We might hear another buzz buzz, and then we'll be off. There we go. Uh, I'm going to hold on while we accelerate away, um, which is uh, in battery power. Away we go. Nice. Um, so yeah, it's, it's it's very smart. I like it. It says uh, it says all sorts of nice things in it. It's, it's, very, it's very smart. I just think it's a very well branded train. Um, interesting little tidbit, which I'm going to do. Come down here. See this here. This on the floor here. That is the access to the sanding box. So you fill the sander through the, the vestibule, which I think is quite nice. Um, there is something which is worth noting, which is naughty, is that um, signage isn't bilingual yet. Uh, so I presume it will be at some point. All right, let's walk through an open, there we are, the uh, open gangways, they're quite nice. And uh, it all looks very smart, I have to say. Uh, there's the CCTV. I think TFW Wales basically ticked all the boxes for all the for all the extra bits from Viva Rail, which I'm sure made uh, Adrian Shooter very happy. It has a gen sound underneath, so it's not just battery. The reason it's a 230, it's still because it's got the diesel gen sound underneath. Um, and as you can see, it's got the standard dot matrix sign in the background that won't work on the camera. So we're now we're on the train. We're coming back into. Uh, I just did an out and back basically, so we'd have a ride on a 230. Uh, give me a chance to inspect it. You can see we're coming into the former military yards. Let's see there's, there's tracks and all sorts going on. I think all sorts is going to appear behind us. Uh, there's some trains behind us. What are the other stock we're going to see? Let's, let's do this. What other trains are we going to see, I wonder? Hmm. There's a yellow Mark III DVT in the background there. I can't see my own face because there's still a yellow Mark III DVT. Uh, there, what else we've got? We've got... Um, there's an 80s rail crane there, actually, that's quite cool. Uh, a load of Mark 3s. So we're going to go through, past a load of Mark 3 coaches as well, which I, I'm sure you all know I'm not the biggest fan of anymore, anyway. They were great in their day. They're not anymore. They're a 50-year-old designer coach. They've had their time. I might be wrong, but behind me here is a big old concrete lump that looks awfully like an engine testing, you know, jet engine testing facility. Do some googling. Thought I'd grab you for a moment uh, just to show you. There's some interesting, uh, some some interesting embedded track down here. They're doing some trials of different forms of embedded track. There's another track form uh, behind me there that you can see that's being trialled as well. It's quite interesting actually. Um, in amongst it all, as I say, the stalls are one thing. All the different sort of uh, exhibitions, but also there's some permanent features here because this is a live testing facility for railways. So some interesting bits and pieces going on. So I am on my way to speak to 
my uh, one of my bosses. Uh, uh, rail manager. Oh, uh, there's the uh, uh, little alarm there going off. Oh, that's very good, very good. Anyway, I'm off to go and speak to Nigel Harris, managing editor of uh, Rail Magazine, and I don't really know. Just sort of, he's in charge, really. Is the face and the driving force has a huge team supporting him, as he will always say, as he always says. But a major part in making these events happen. And we're going to speak to him. Everyone, uh, I'm very pleased to be sat here with uh, Nigel Harris, the managing editor of Rail, one of my bosses, uh, <laughs> whether you like it or not, and um, and actually someone who just it's, it's difficult to exactly describe the role other than sort of you sit at the top of a very big, complex organisation that makes this happen. But it wouldn't happen without your drive I think it's fair to say so it's uh, this always happens because of your passion for it to happen which kind of the first thing I want to say is what what is it about Rail Live what, what, for you what is Rail Live about the first thing I have to say is I, I thank you for your kind comments um, but the people who really make it happen are the, 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 the ladies that you see in there and the, 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 the entire team uh, who do a brilliant job in very difficult circumstances yes I do sit at the, 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 sort of near the top of it um, but it by no means a uh, single So what is Rail Live to me? Well the show's existed for a good few years. It started about 2013 in a corner of the Network Rail Headquarters car park in Milton Keynes <laughs> as a display of, of yellow machines. And let me say at this point that plant and equipment will always be at the heart of, net, of, of Rail Live. Uh, and it, it ran for a few years in, in that respect and it was doing well as, a, as, a, as an annual event. Steve Featherston used to, used to play a big part in keeping it going. Um, and then I've always had an idea for a big rail show and we couldn't find anywhere to do it. The railway doesn't have these sort of locations. So we even thought of doing it on the Great Central Railway, linking yeah. the stations and that wouldn't, wouldn't work. I toyed with the idea of seeing if Bombardier might be interested in the time in Derby works, but you couldn't do this in, a, in an active way. Yeah, yeah. So the idea really just went into hibernation. And then in about 2015, 16, somewhere back then, Adrian Shooter had got his first D-train, which he built over on that side of the side, and he sent out an invitation to come and see it working. Um, ah, thank you, Ellie, for the coffee. Right. Thanks, Wonderful. Lovely. Lovely. Um, <laughs> keep hydrated, everyone. And he, he sent out an invitation, and I was vaguely aware, I'd seen the press releases that somebody had taken over here at this part of the MOD site, whose history is it, it, it went back to 1941, when Franz fell, Churchill realised he was going to need to invade France at some point, and this was one of many big depots set up to store tanks, motorbikes, ammunition, and everything they would need for that. Shut in about 1990. And I'd heard that somebody had taken over and was doing railway stuff here, but it wasn't particularly on, on my radar in detail. Mm. So I came over for Adrian, and so it's Adrian Shooter played a large part in this happening <laughs> for a ride on his D train, and we had a ride around the circuit. And it was fascinating seeing Adrian's D train working, but I was a gog at what I was seeing. I'm looking out the window, I did all the incredible sight. And I, I mean, the, the hairs on the back of my neck stood up. I thought, this is it, this is where we can do, we can make this dream come true. And so I went and found Colin Flack, who, um, yeah. who ran the site then, I mean, and built it now, but although he's shortly off to, um, him and his wife are off for adventures new. Um, I went and sought him out, and in half an hour, hammered out the basis of this show. And the essence of it, and most people seem to get this, is we're trying to develop it as a kind of Farnborough air show for the rail industry. So there's, there's business, I mean, millions of pounds exchange of hands and contracts at Farnborough. But then they'll all stop and say, oh, look, there's a red arrow. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, um, yeah. So it's that mix of business and enjoyment and passion for the industry. And so we've started expanding the coverage of the show. As I say, the yellow machines, and there's millions of pounds worth of equipment here. Slightly eye-watering. Which I yeah. always love to see. And I, I don't know enough about it to know what they all do. And in fact, I tweeted a picture of one the other day, so I have no idea that what this does. But it looks like it's out of Thunderbirds. Yeah, it's, uh, as, as a track person, and I kind of see some of these working, I, have, I only know about 50% so, of them, yes. Yeah, so credit to the plant industry and I'd like to say thank you to them for supporting the show as, as they do because this is really important that we always have these yellow machines down this, this, this avenue. Yeah. 
but we want to do other things. So, you know, we started, we got a train running from Paddington with Great Western for the first couple of years. Um, and we've tried to get the, the sort of whatever's cutting edge, we get it. So we had a first hydrogen train here as a, yep. as a 10 and a quarter inch gauge prototype from Birmingham University. Uh, and then a the year after, we had Porter Brooks Hydroflex here uh, 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 and showing the application of innovation, technology, and engineering success that the railway doesn't get enough credit for. Too many people think the railway still picks and shovels and heavy legs and doesn't and, innovate and, and you and, and, and yet yeah. you know it, it, you've only to look at the equipment here to see just how much amazing innovation has been done and of course um, that's happening now digitally with signaling and everything else and that's one of our big challenges that we're looking at how we can represent that here in the future because yeah. yeah. signaling is, is less coloured lights on poles at the site of the railway <laughs> so our signaling zone is what do we do with it next that's mm. an interesting sort of question so we're developing that air show aspect so this year we've got these uh, Stadler um, a battery train, metro, metro train quite a bit of time with Liverpool, yeah. um, and we've got uh, Great Western's 769 Trimo. Now, to see that illustrated, displayed here, when the, the um, I can never remember what the, the class are, the, the 319s, 319s, that's it. There's yeah, a fleet there. of 319s as they were withdrawn over there. Looking dusty. <laughs> and then there's, there's, there's yeah. illustrates how we can upscale, upgrade existing trains if you keep in reasonable order yeah. while they're in store to, to live again and do a different thing. And of course, that's just what um, Beaver Rail did. And we've been fortunate to get their assistance again again this year. So, a farm bra show for the rail industry, and we want everybody to come and have the conversations. And it's not just about what business do you do at this show, it's about awareness and sharing that innovation. I was over on uh, with Network Rail Air Ops yesterday, and Sean Lee, the observer, who we all see in the Scottish. The, the legend that is the Sean Lee. <laughs> Whenever I turn on the it looks like there's another TV program. Like Scottish Railways, and I know that within 10 minutes, Sean's going to be over Lockheed Hill for some yeah. <laughs> saying how he's got the best job yeah. in the world. And he has, and I thought I had. Um, but there were two guys talking to Sean in language I understood one word in three, and it was all about the cameras on the on, 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 the, on the aircraft um, and how it can, the, the digital interface. And they cost a million quid more than the hell. The kit a was, million quid more than the helicopter. Well, that it's camera, incredible. Incredible. that yeah, camera, yeah. the, the helicopter's worth nine hundred thousand pounds, and, and uh, you just shot my fox. That, ca that, that camera is, is a million pounds worth. And it's the first civil application of the military technology that is on the Apache. Ah, that's um, Now, so we've all seen these programs where, you know, the pilot in his full visor looks at something and you see the little red cross in the, or little red square in the middle and the pilot blinks and fires a missile at it. Um, it is that technology and it is incredible. Sean was explaining to me this morning, say there's a trespasser on the track. Um, say it was you on the track. It's, it's perfectly likely. And they spot you. Sean showed me how you can draw a marquee around you, and that logs your image into its memory. And it will just track you. He, didn't, he, he presses the button, he's got the, the world's best games console. Yeah. Wherever you run, all they need to do, and wherever they fly, that camera will follow you. If you were to run into a tunnel to hide, the camera, they, they fly to the other end, where, or they can see both ends, and when a figure arrives, it will check that the figure that it's seen has got a high vis, a beard, and shorts on, and it picks you up again. Uh, and it can do that, I think, from four miles away. It's just now, I bet I was surprised to hear that. The railway is at the leading end of a huge amount of technology. We've got the NMT over there, yeah. the new measurement train. There's camera equipment on network rails, survey trains like that. You could glue a crisp packet down onto a sleeper and run a camera, with that camera over it, 100 miles an hour, and it would take a picture where you could read the ingredients. Now that technology, and the, the, the pattern, it recognises patterns, came from the food industry, started off life in pizza factories. With a conveyor belt of pizza. So, yeah, has it yeah. got the mushrooms, pineapple, ham? And if it hasn't, it rejects the pizzas. Now the railways developed that technology, and it is world beating. At the time I first saw that, nobody else in the world was doing it. Now we invented railways, and I know you agree with me on this, we should be prouder of them than we are. And we should be promoting to people just how good a place the railway is to work. How often do you see people say, you thought they're working on the railway? Well, the technology, the equipment, the opportunities are just amazing. Um, we are passionately believe that part of the role of this show 
is to promote that innovation, um, to show it either on our websites, our Twitter feed, in our magazine, and we try to get the media here to report on our customers. It's really quite it's, exciting yeah, technological stuff. And we want everybody in the industry, or as many people as we can get, to, to, to come and do that with us. And that includes people like ORR, who are the, the HMRI. BTP are showing us what they do with the dogs. Um, Network Rail's air operations here with two helicopters and a bunch of drones. We've got the NMT. It shows how good the railway is. And, and I get up, you've seen the audio, but there's a real vibe here. There is, there is. It's been, I was, so, so, and I'll, I'll ask you this, I'll kind of see what your thoughts are on this. Is I was worried that there'd be a little bit of trepidation as, as we came back. Um, but no, not at all. It's as, as we've, uh, yeah, I mean, what were you thinking? Were you a little bit worried that there might have been a bit of, of a course sensitivity? Of course we were. I mean, three months ago, we had to take a decision on go, yeah. go or not. Yeah. And since, after, there's times when I thought, absolutely the right decision. And then you hear the Indian variant, and you think, oh, God, are we doing the right thing? Here? But we work very, very closely. Our events team, led by Chris Lester, are world class. And they work very closely with the government, with an organisation called the Association of Event Organisers, which sounds a bit tedious, but they keep up to date with all the restrictions, the regulations, the hand sign, all everything that's needed to run an event indoors or out. We had endless meetings with the local authority who have the power to say, no, you can't do that, show. Um, what we planned, and they approved our plans. Um, and we had a slightly nervous moment yesterday when Chris got a message that uh, the local environmental health officer was on site and wanted to see him. Okay. And we, we reacted exactly like that. And, yeah. and Chris, Chris had a good strong coffee and went on to see him uh, and came back and he said, well, that was interesting. He said, the bloke said, I've been here for about two hours as a mystery shopper wandering around. He said, and this is a difficult thing to do and you had some very stringent rules you had to obey. He said, I have to say, because there was part of course respect yeah. that I'm really impressed. He said, you've done everything that you said you were going to do and more. He said, I've got a couple of points where I can give you a bit of advice on fine tuning or you might want to bear in mind, but basically, really well done. And it's, and it's actually, spoken to, I've spoken to quite a few people to get their feeling, Lucy for example, and, and, and they've all said, actually, you know what, I was a little bit anxious, but came and I felt safe the whole time. I never felt uncomfortable with that, these new band. I could, I could get quite emotional at that because the entire team has worked really, really hard to create that that feeling and somebody was twittering on the right it last night said the same thing great day felt really safe well done to everybody you know so we're pleased but it, was it a risk yes have we had sleepless nights oh <laughs> yeah, I'll bet. Um, I mean yeah. the the shuttle is a story in itself um, a few months ago Mark Hopwood managing director of, of Great Western said why don't I run four shuttles from Worcester each day because if you imagine Worcester is at the centre of, of a big X yeah, yeah. on the country so you could have got on a trip cross country train in Newcastle or York change once at Worcester and got straight into our show yeah. so you could have done that from the northwest from the southwest from London and then the Hitachi train crack um, that debacle so hit and so understandably Mark said look my fleet's under such pressure I just can't do it and under, we, we understood of course we were disappointed and had a bit of an oh dear yeah. <laughs> um, because the last thing we wanted to do was um, bring people in by rope we investigated and Stadler really tried hard to run their electric mm. battery train to Honeybourne and back as a shuttle but there's just too much bureaucracy given that it's not an approved train yeah. Yeah. and as an engineer you will know this Gareth and like me you're not a chap who's easily deflected but you will have also been involved in projects where you have to just stand back at some point and say this is not going to happen we are, we are just trying to do too much and so we did um, and we have to take that tough decision and network rail who were poised to build a little temporary platform in Honeybourne I stood them down on the Wednesday and they said there's nothing we can do to the Lord we just have to recognise that this is not for this year on Saturday I got a string of messages from Adrian Shooter um, to contact him urgently and I finally caught up with him on Saturday evening I was up on my boat actually, oh, yeah. <laughs> and um, he said I've just heard of your predicament he said I've still got a transport for Wales 2.30 on the site he said I'm sure they might be amenable to using that as, as a shuttle if we can get the uh, little platform built on Humble this is the little platform I've stood Network Rail down on so yeah, no, so before. Network Rail has paid all that away so I, I, I sat and thought about it and um, in the end I, I, I sent a, a very tentative text to Sir Peter Hendy and to Stuart Calvert who'd been um, responsible for um, 
building this platform and just said, look guys, we've just been offered a last throw of the dice, yeah, yeah. which we weren't expecting. Um, if I were you, I'd be telling me to go away, though I didn't just say go away. Um, and there's no problem with that at all. But as we've had, had that throw of the dice offered, I'm just making you aware. And Stuart Calvert, to his incredible credit, came back and said, yeah, well, we can leave it with me, I'll call you on Monday morning. That was last Monday. Um, and within 72 hours, in a wonderful piece of collaboration, and that's the key part, I'll come back to that. Uh, they managed to pull it off. The platform was built with hours to spare and gauge cleared with hours to spare. Um, and the 2.30 has been running up and down to Honeywell and bringing hundreds of people in. And as I fully expected, taking hundreds of people, including you, you know, on just an out and back rides. Yeah, that's going to say, yeah, train. that's it. So all credit to everybody. Transport for Wales, because, you know, politicians very often are risk averse and do the easy thing and don't want to take a chance. They saw that this would get them a bit of exposure and publicity which he has oh, yeah. Twitter was full as you will have seen of people saying what a fantastic train um, and it's been shuttling backwards and forwards and we just sent two buggy loads of the entire network rail air ops crew into, including the pilots who all wanted a ride and have, <laughs> and, and have cabbed it and have come back in greatly excited um, but the collaboration thing is the key point I do detect a new mood of we can do this um, and rather than people being hidebound by the rules, rather than being half empty, they're being half full. Um, and it is crucial that the industry captures that, because I suspect, my gut feel is a lot of professionals on the railway who are good at everything, engineering, operation, timetable planning, whatever, if asked to do something a bit different, and maybe said, well, there's a rules, we, it, we've got to, and of course that hems everybody in. What, I'm, what I sense is that there's a new spirit, well, let's do this. Um, and that's partly a result of um, Williams and, and, and the, the promise of it there. A big reason is Andrew Haynes' approach to network rail is enabling and not constraining. Um, he's encouraging and not demotivating. Mm. And I think people are responding to that. And what's crucial in this period of post-Williams publication where it's made clear we need to make some quick progress. I know it's going to take three years for legislation, but Andrew Haynes has been tasked with finding Gain some advance of quick wins, yeah. low hanging fruit, call it what you want. These need not be all complicated things, but if we can harness that goodwill and those innate skills of the workforce and make some stuff happen, and it could be small stuff, it could be how easy it is to get a bench on a class up, um, it could be getting some signage which has been confusing for you for years. Well, no, that's Network Rail's job, no, it's the operators. If we can harness all that and start to build a bit of momentum, then as the legislation proceeds, then hopefully the Treasury and the DFT are two big losses. Yeah. The Treasury needs to trust and the DFT needs to back off. And they both need to trust and be confident. Well, you don't just get trust and confidence. You know, the industry, every, I mean, everybody, you know, from the top senior people, uh, and I'm not going to say down, I'm going to say across, to, yeah. to gate line staff, cleaners, and everybody else, everybody can do their best to show that the railway is really worthwhile. And the serious point is, my God, do we need to? There is a big risk here in that, you know, we've lost a lot of business. Uh, some will never come back. We're not going to get all the trains back that we're running before. And actually, I don't think we want them because we need to decongest the railway. But we need to re build from the ground up. Now there is also an opportunity in that the, what we've seen over the last 15 months, it's been like when there's a forest fire that destroys everything and just leaves a cleared forest floor through which fresh greenery can... can and we both, we both talked about being slightly frustrated that some of those opportunities haven't actually been grasped, but you think there is, but, but you're I just, there are no I just have a gut sense from, from just observing and, and, and editing rail and talking to people about what they're doing. They've all got the tails up and they're springing the step. Oh, right, there's a few jobs worth some miseries as we all know but there is a bit of a sense of that and certainly from hard experience in arranging this show and what my team have found and what I've found in trying to do the things that I'm doing is that where I would have expected oh yeah it's a good idea no, but it's not possible they've said no, let's look at it why not and the, the, the quality of the show that you've seen around you is, is tribute to them I mean all I can do is ask the question and be a nuisance um, which have a lifetime of experience of being. <laughs> But they're responding and saying, well, yeah, actually, it is a good idea. We do want real life to succeed. 
and it is quite moving. Um, it's, it's quite emotional, you know. So, and that's and that's for me. That's and I think for a lot of people, as you said yourself, that's what the show is about. It's um, you asked me to write the piece explaining what rail life was in 2019, which is a, 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 a privilege. And I ended it by saying, anyone who says the rail industry isn't innovative either doesn't like uh, either they don't know the industry or they don't like the industry because the reality is that the rail industry is they certainly incredibly innovative. and they certainly don't understand it yeah. and right from the top I mean we had a bit of a VIP area there yesterday so that the people who were giving speeches and talking in the conference and doing work for us could have a five minutes themselves or five minutes at the table like this with a burger and a barbecue and, and a glass of posh pop because it's a, a railway <laughs> site so sadly there's no Absolutely. there's no alcohol um, and I met Andrew Haynes over there at the door after we'd done the conference session I said are you going to come for some food he said no he said I'm not here for that long I want to go and meet people um, I want to get out and about he said I'll grab a sandwich on the way home I just wanted to come and say thanks for the invite and it was great being here and I probably won't see you again today so you know and he wandered off and I'd given him a note to say if you have time um, Abby Broadley at Aquarius the Land Rover had said is there any chance of you calling in she'd be delighted to show you her new products mm. and I got a text from, um, from Abby last night saying I don't know whether you did ask Andrew to call in <laughs> but he <laughs> but did he uh, you know so that sort of spirit if we can cascade that can do right the way across the industry right the way from the spectrum to the guy who's running everything and is we all seem to believe although we won't admit it is the anointed for <laughs> at least the early stage of the funny thing right across to gate lines cleaners depot staff everybody i know it sounds trite but everybody can do their bit it's kind of a railway dig for victory for absolutely absolutely we have to do it as as an industry together forgetting the legislation forget the heart we, as we, we already have to do it together and as you know um it's not all about drivers and signalmen and engineers it's about a whole family of people many of whom you never see steve davis made a very good analogy yesterday he said it you know the, the the army and the artillery, you know, an army and artillery and infantry men will call in fire over the heads. Um, when well, they've never seen the, the artillery, uh, the people running the artillery, they have to trust them, they're, they're not going to fall short on their heads. Yeah, yeah. And he said, a driver driving at 125 mile an hour in fog will that's never meet the signal, uh, but you've just got to trust the system and the people within it. And that's absolutely what the railway is, and that is the essence of the railway family. But everybody can do the bit, you know, if everybody did just that little bit more and, it, and we're not talking about it going out of the way a huge amount it maybe is about being a bit more flexible it's, a, it's attitude more than it's not time it's attitude for game line stuff it's maybe just having a smile and saying have a great day what can I do with that ticket which platform are you looking for everybody can do the bit to make the railway better Nigel, it's been an absolute pleasure to take up time. We said, well, let's, let's do, let's okay, do, let's okay, do our elbows, we're, we're behaving well. Um, but I said five minutes, and we ended up having a long chat. I, I should have guessed it, but we, we do this all the time. Anyway, Nigel Harris. Thank you. Cheers now. Oh, so there we go. Sun shining. Hopefully that's been an interesting little guide. As you can see, there's the little miniaturised parry people mover behind me. Uh, hopefully that's been interesting for all of you. Uh, we covered quite a lot. We covered the... We had a... I think the most fun I had was in that... Uh, the 777, which was fantastic. Uh, but also we had a look at uh, various other bits and pieces, actually. I think we covered quite a lot. We had a nice walk through the uh, the new measurement train, which is, which is nice. Uh, had a chat with a few familiar faces. Yeah, I think it's... Uh, I think that's been quite interesting. Hopefully interesting for you. It's the first on-location rail matter. Uh, Send your feedback. Tell me what you think. Uh, <laughs> basically, all that's left for me to do is to give you the old, uh, the old heave ho, which, in this glorious sunshine and passing a load of old wheels, there are, see the, the axle boxes there, and the shiny yellow. Um, all that remains for me to do is say thanks to all of you. Uh, as ever, you can listen to this in audio-only format. There is the. Patreon support that you can provide to make this sort of thing happen more. Your feedback and advice is always welcome. Uh, chat about it on the Discord. You can chuck me pennies on PayPal if you uh, if that's what you fancy doing. If you if you wish, you can suggest new themes, new episodes, guests, all that stuff on the on the Discord, but particularly if you're a Patreon supporter, you get that benefit that I have to listen to you because you've paid me. Anyway, I've done my adverts. 
Ah uh, yes, next week's episode is uh, going to be it's a signalling episode, conventional signalling. Uh, title shall be flinging up on your screen now. Uh, Danny Scroggins is joining us, so that should be good. We should learn about conventional signalling, you've all been asking about it, so uh, yeah, that should be fun. And then we have, I mean, there's, there's a queue, I've got a few episodes all lined up, which is nice. Anyway, right, enough of me wittering on. Uh, this has been a, probably going to end up being a long episode. I've no idea, I've not edited it together yet, but uh, all I want to say is um, thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time. Cheerio! Cheerio!